Those who've experienced it say it's worse than losing a grand final. Finishing second in a preliminary final leaves you with nothing. And both the Tigers and Double Blues will be driven by that fear of a season wasted when they clash this afternoon. The Tigers are also facing the humiliation of departing the finals in straight sets in a season where they finished at the top of the ladder for the first time since 1981. Straight out to Kurt, drops it in short for Bode, carried a bit too much, Thomas knocked it away, Cranston did well, Bode should kick this, and he has done it! The Double Blues have failed to overcome Glenelg in their past five meetings, but the last time they beat the Bays in a preliminary final, they won the 1976 Premiership. Evans to Thring, can go inboard to Whiteman. This could top off a lovely day for Andrew Whiteman as he comes in and puts it through. Game on, Glenelg versus Sturt. Well, all season long, it appeared the Premiership would be won by one of three sides. Glenelg, Sturt or Central District. Well, now the Double Blues and the Bays, they just have to win this afternoon just to get to the grand final. Well, but it was a little unexpected. Yeah, look, it should be a fantastic game today. And these two teams played each other twice this year. First time Glenelg won by 14 points. Second time they won again by eight points. So it should be fantastic. And before we go, I just want to say congratulations to my old club, the North Wyala Magpies. Fantastic. They broke a 29-year drought to win the Premiership last weekend. Well, the drought for Glenelg is... Is it that long? Yes, it is. Just 22 years. It's not that long. And it's not that long for Sturt either. In 2002, they won. And, of course, they come into this match in form because in the first semi-final, they overcome Norwood. And their traditional foes really didn't give a yelp. No, they didn't. Look, Norwood had given their best shot the week before where they played some fantastic football. But to be brutally honest, Sturt were just magnificent all day. They ran hard. Their clearance work was great. And they really gave ample supply to a guy like Brandon. Chambers at full forward. It was a 25 point margin at half time. We thought it might be a little bit in the balance, especially if that young man, Taylor Walker, was going to stand up and take marks like that. Well, look, he's a fantastic talent. We won't see much more of him at the SANFL. I would expect he'd play the majority of the year in the AFL next year. But that guy there, Brent Chambers, he was fantastic. Six goals. Sturt's work to be able to just close down Norwood's midfield that was so good the week before was excellent. And Rick McGowan would be really impressed with their work ethic. Yes, it was, a, it was a good finish in the second half. As I said, the Double Blues led by 25 points at halftime. They kicked seven goals, four to just two behinds in the third quarter, led by 69 points at three-quarter time. And a man who was a large part of it was that guy there, number 10, John McDonald, playing his first game of the season. The young left footer kicked four goals. Well, the kid can play, and look, it's fantastic confidence shown by the coach, Rick McGowan, to play a bloke who hasn't played in the league team basically all year. And for him to step up in a final like that and kick four goals was just a, a great return from himself. 71 points, the final margin. You mentioned Brant Chambers. He kicked six goals, three to lead the way. David Trotter had 35 possessions and nine marks and three goals. He had a pretty fair afternoon, but he couldn't guide his red legs to victory. On to the second semi-final play. Later that afternoon, the Tigers against the Bulldogs. Everybody thought this is a chance to stop the Bulldogs' march to grand finals. There's no doubt about that, but you just cannot write this club off. They've got an enormous amount of stability. Guys like Led Stevens. Tom Zorick, Roy Lev, Chris Grant, they've been there a long time. So have some of their players, and they've played in a lot of finals footy. They're experienced. They lift to a new level come finals time. The Gowans boys, we see there, Chris Gowans dealing out a hand pass there. They don't know what it's like not to play in a grand final. They have played 13, and now they will play their 14th grand final as a senior player in succession. They lost their first five. They played three at Anglesey. One at St Kilda in the reserves, and then one at Werribee before they won one for Centrals, and they haven't stopped winning, basically. Well, they're just amazing players, and I think they really do deserve, you know, any any credit they they get, and they deserve the premierships because they work so hard. They're just fantastic players. They really are the glue or the cement of that football club. They've been there for a long time, and the club has worked around them, and they've worked around the club. It's a fantastic effort for those two individuals and the Central District Footy Club. We see Chris Gowans finishing off the job there, putting through a goal. We we saw Todd Grimer up forward just a moment ago wearing number one for the Bays. 17 possessions, seven marks, two goals, one lone hand up forward, though. They really did struggle going forward. Yeah, look, I think Glenelg will be really disappointed with that game. They didn't give their best effort, and I reckon that they'll want to make amends for that. 
in this game. 30 points to the final margin. Daniel Schell with five goals after being a defender for most of the season. Well, down to Sodas on the boundary, and Sodas, the Bays, they do, because of that game, have a couple of suspect players. Yeah, they do. Look, one of those is Paul Sherwood. Now, he missed last week with a cork thigh, and it was a cork thigh that just continued to bleed, but he has been given the OK. He's back in the side. Now, that releases Rory Kirkby to go back to half forward, which is very important for the Bay structure. And the man charged with steering that Bay tram, Mark Mick, and does also have a very impressive midfield at his disposal today. And certainly, you know, we like to rotate a number of players through there and, uh, and we'll, that'll be the case today. You know, really, we're looking for a, a really strong performance from everybody. I thought, you know, we were a bit patchy last week in that regard and, you know, the players uh, are really looking to respond and uh, to give us a more even performance across the board. If we have a look at the Glenelg lineup, guys like Todd Grimer are going to be so important in that forward line. For me, he must kick goals. Brett Backwell will play in the midfield and forward. He's another crucial player. Wasn't great last week. He'll need to pick up his effort. Trevor Cranston is just a workhorse in the ruck, and they'll rely heavily on him today. And so does uh, the Double Blues. We're hoping to have Greg Bentley back for this match, but it's not to be. No, look, Greg trained throughout the week. The week. He had a problem with a hamstring. He got through OK, even got through training last night. But uh, he pulled up pretty sore about 9 o'clock last night. He made the call to Rick McGowan and said, look, the hamstring's no good. So he was coming in for George Thring. Now with Bentley out, actually Seb Painter comes in for a run. So Thring out, Painter in pretty much is the wrap-up from last week's game. And we saw Pat Fiddock line up at half forward last week. He was sensational. He was very dynamic and certainly added something to Ian Perry and Brand Chambers up forward. But you mentioned Todd Grimer before. He's very important to Glenelg up forward. Expect Fitok early to get the job on him. So he'll go back, down back. And the Blues got lots of confidence from that win against Norwood. And expect them to try and get the early ascendancy in this match. Yeah, I think as coaches, uh, we tend to focus too much on the opposition at times. And guys like to play their own game. And, and that's what we're bringing to the group this week is to really work on our strengths. And, I mean, that's what's got us here so far. So we'll work on that today. One of your big strengths last week against Norwood was the clearances. You smashed them there. Perhaps against Glenelg the two times this year, that's been your weak link? Yeah, Glenelg are very good at that. They've got a very good ruckman and some quality in and under midfielders. And it's an area we improved on last week. And if we can match them in that area, it'll go a long way for us winning. If we have a look at the Sturt lineup, the midfield is so important for Sturt. Guys like Sheedy, Nelson, Crane are crucial. Glenelg must curtail their influence if they are going to win the game. They've obviously got some key forwards up there. Guys like Perry and Chambers, we know they're true goal kickers. Glenelg, they just have to stop the supply so the Chambers can't kick a bag. Absolutely. Well, kicking to the uh, Sturt is one that's us kicking to the northern end of the ground. So it is in terms of the weather, what's that going to mean? Well, it's a good choice. A bit of breeze here, uh, just drifting across to the left of screen. I think the first few weeks of the finals, we've seen the breeze go to the right, but today a little bit different. Not overly strong, worth a goal or so. Around about 19 degrees is the top forecast. It's pretty cool at the moment. Perhaps some showers later in the day, but at the moment it looks good. The crowd is building. Of course, both these sides, Sturt and Glenelg, do have pretty healthy uh, supporter groups, and they're all filling in here, so the atmosphere is building very nicely just before we get underway here. I'll put you on the spot straight away. You played for both clubs. You played a grand final for the Double Blues 10 years ago. Geez, you're an old man. <laughs> Tell me, who Something do you think's like going to win? Look, I think that uh, the Double Blues uh, have the better list and the better squad, so if both teams play at their peak, I'd expect Sturt to just get home. Thanks for that, Sodas. And uh, Rob, uh, you've had uh, experience as an assistant coach at AFL level and also you're in charge of South Adelaide for a while, for three years or, or so. Tell me your view of how the game's going to unfold. Look, I think that, uh, as Sodas said, and I hate to actually agree with him, but uh, Sturt do have a very good list. Um, I think they may get over the line. Glenelg are really workmanlike in the way they go about their football. And I think if they can if they can get hold of the ball and can tell the influence of the Sturt midfield, they'll give themselves an opportunity to win the game. Players just taking up position. And as you can see there, Jade Sheedy had a big game last week with 31 possessions. The other man who was good for them last week is just behind him, somewhat in his shadow, so to speak. And Josh Cabillo, a lot of the grunt work had 24 possessions last week got the ball out from the base of the packs. Well, he's a rising star for Sturdy. Obviously, he made the transition from North Adelaide, and he was, he was recruited by Rick McGowan to basically get in and under, get the ball out, feed it off to guys like Sheedy and Crane, who can really run and carry the ball, and he did his job last week. And that is the job of Ty Allen that we'll see in the middle of the ground, I'm sure, today. He won't get many kicks. He'll get a lot of handballs from the base of a pack. Yeah, look, he's a fantastic player, and he's their number one on baller. He's been able to get the ball 
a lot throughout the year. Set for the first bounce. Here's Chris Kendall. Thanks, Neil. Going to go against the consensus here. I think the Tigers can go into the grand final. First one since 1992. Although if Sturt fans are looking for omens, the last 10 prelim finals have been decided by 39 points average. Sturt's winning margin this year average, 39 points. Fisher goes by hand to Kane. Murphy over the top to Fisher. Bit of a scrubby kick into attack. Bode lurking at the fall of the ball, takes it. Delivers by hand, further afield, Ruwald. Blues looking to work it out through Cabillo. Going up to the centre, it's all the Tigers back here. Plenty of numbers. Switching into the centre. The skipper, Mules. Takes it and goes. Got a leading player moving further afield. Good mark. Ruwald. Going deep into the pocket. Spots up Doldig. Doldig's signalling he wants to centre it. Goes longer. Plenty of Blues back here. Farmer paddles it in front of him. If it sits for him. Snap from Matthew Bode. Final to Matthew Bode. We know it's his last season of football, Robert. A good start to the game. It is a good start, and uh, look, he needs to kick goals. I've, I've mentioned that Brett Backwell's another player. Dolbig is another one who can go forward and kick goals, but Bode's so important to him because he's got some pace, he's got some talent, he knows where the goals are, he does plenty of grunt work as well, he does all the team things, and that's what he's made a career of doing, is picking up the ball like that, off one step, using his left foot, his preferred foot, kick the goal and just to rough up a couple of Sturt players after he kicked the goal. <laughs> just to uh, add some cream on the top. Thompson briefly with a hand on the ball in the middle for the double blues. Dives back in there. He's got plenty of company. Just quickly down to the Sturt bench siders. Yeah, big Fab DeLuca nearest the camera there. Seb Painter who came into the side last night for uh, Greg Bentley with his withdrawal and John McDonald. Very impressive last week with his four goals just feel that bench that they've decided will put the young boys on ice just for a little while and and wait until the tension goes out of the match in the middle not a bad tactic to be honest Whoa. no ruckman hand on the ball Allen was there briefly now Kane incorrect disposal umpire let him go play on he said and they played on until the umpire eventually was forced to come in early days in this match both sides obviously just feeling their way, Sturt trailing by six points, but slightly going forward just at the moment. Still inside the centre square. Perry tries to belt it down. Fisher was slammed down, and we get another ball up. Well, you should expect a fair bit of this today. If uh, Glenelg can do what I think they'll try to do, is basically stop Sturt's use of the ball and make sure there's plenty of stoppages and plenty of boundary throw-ins. Wicks on hands and knees, looking to farm it out to Gum, to Free. Comes back out to Gum, sends him deep into attack. He's looking for Chambers at the front, just dispossessed. Out the back here, it's going to be a free though to Glenelg against Chambers. Holding it, going to Rudolph. He's got Mules moving for him, honours that. Mules, looking to keep it on the outer side. He's got a long lead out there from Grimer. He's worked his man under it very neatly. Goes in board by hand to Kane. Takes a bounce. Looks up, delivers long. That's just going to be at the feet of the player in Kirk. Nilsson on his hammer and tack. Looking to create the stoppage now. Going to have a ball up. Down to the Glenelg bench soders. Yes, Josh Willoughby down there, former Swan. Tommy Holmes and Angus Lally, who was very important last week against the Bullies, kicked two goals early. Feast gets a knockdown, only as far as Fisher. Going to have another stoppage. It's an interesting matchup that we can see straight away. You've got the two number twos there. You've got Brett Backwell and Luke Crane. It'd be interesting to find out who's instigated that. One seems to be running with the other. At this stage, Crane's following Backwell. No, Backwell likes to run him off their feet. Long kick into the forward lines by Fisher. It's going to fall just short. Rushed over for a behind. You can see Glenelg are very workmanlike around the stoppages. They'll get in under, do the hard work. They've built their whole season on grunt work. Then if they can release the ball as they did on that occasion, they'll try to give it to one of their runners to try to make a quick break from the stoppage. McGlone with a kick in for the double blues and he goes long and wide and gee, that carried a long, long way. Wicks at the base of the pack. 
couldn't quite gather the ball over the boundary line. We'll get a throw in. It's an interesting player, isn't he, Wicks? He's, uh, he certainly gets under the radar. Obviously, opposition focus on a lot of other on-ballers that Sturt do have, but Wicks just accumulates possession week after week. Cranston with a thumb forward for the base. We'll get another baller. Expect to see a lot of this, as Rob mentioned, but that's what the Bays will try and do, just shut down some of Sturt's run. Here's Block. Just thumps it inside forward 50. Kirkby maybe at the back. It comes to Kirk. Had to release the ball, was tackled, and now it'll be rushed through by Farmer in the tackle of Todd Griner. Well, you can see that Glenelg at the moment are on top around the stoppages. It's tight, it's hard. Obviously, Mark Micken and his coaching team have put an enormous amount of effort and energy into that this season. That's why they finished on top of the ladder. 18 possessions to five for Sturt at the moment. Nick Walker about to bring it back in for the double blues. Going towards the outer side again. Punch down the front. Oh, they've got plenty of run. Unloading long. Look to be Mules. Goes long. Punch over the boundary line. Another rush behind. That was, Lu that was Lucas Block. Fedek to bring the ball in quickly. Double Blues for the first time coming this side of the ground. He went to Crane, who almost had the second grab, couldn't take it. Just on that last kick out, Sturt kicked the ball out, and you can see the discipline of Glenelg. They punch to the front, they had numbers at the fall of the ball, they get front and square on every occasion. Very well disciplined team. Cranston brought it down. Kane trying to use his pace sheet, he was with him, got him, released it for Fisher. Behind him was Thompson. Pushed him, but Fisher got it to Backwell. Forced back towards half back. Murphy. Will it carry over the boundary line? It'll be close. Boundary up by says yes. Over on the full. Free kick will go to Farmer. He's not aware of it, but trust me, Mitch Farmer will get the free kick. Boys, last week we saw Michael Coe do a great job on Taylor Walker. Pat Fiddock was lively at half forward today. They've changed roles. We've got Coe back up the forward line. Code's a very, very important player, as you just said then, so just he can go back and he can go forward. Farmer with a fair bit of disguise on that went to Perry. Perry went for gum, held his man off, got it to ground, wait on the umpire, a push. One call play on advantage. Richard Williams comes in and says there was a push there, Byron Murphy. And Mules, well, in fact, from the front as well, maybe that was the reason for the free kick. Well, Mules is only going for the ball. You can see there that Gum's just got in his way, so I fail to see how that was a free kick. If anything, it should have gone to Murphy because Gum was holding his jumper. Tristan Gum, ex-North Adelaide player. Very important player for Sturt is that lead-up small half forward. He's also a good goal-kicking, cr a crumbing goal-kicking player. With Sturt's first shot at goal. Starts it out to the right and it stays there. Chambers in the middle of the pack. A couple of hands on the ball and Cranston was a man who rushed it through for the minor score. Sturt's first of the afternoon. Almost to the eight minute mark. Eight points the margin. Mistake from the kick in. Perry farms it from the kick in. Has a shot and it just strikes the post. Another behind. Well, you can see there, number 15, I think it was Rudolph who kicked the ball in. He, he certainly suffered all week with some concussion. Last week he got carried off. I think it was his kick in there, made the mistake. You just wonder how he's feeling at the moment. Obviously past fit by the doctors, but you can still be a little shaky on your feet if you've had a bad concussion. Glenelg have taken a risk this week and taken a few players, as so to said in the pre-match, under injury clouds into this game. Sturt trying to clog as much space for the Tigers as possible. Backwell puts on the skates, handball's off, Fisher. Going on the wing, sitting under his cane. Good, strong mark taken there. He had Grimer bearing down upon him. A cane, he's got numbers moving in the centre. One of those is Fisher. Guys called play on. Keeping it on the outer side. They get it away by hand now. Going to have another stoppage. Glenelg dominating possession at the moment, 28 to 9. Glenelg have only taken, uh, Sturt I should say, have only taken one mark. Cranston comes out to Bode, just fumbles it at the wrong time, but good enough to recover. To Bode, he's twisting and turning, looking to go further afield by hand. Player slipping over at the wrong time. Calling for holding the ball. Now it slips it out. Bode going for his second. Has a flying shot, it's going to land just outside the square. Punch down Grimer leading for it. They build beautifully, Crane working it away. 
Goes out, just going to beat Whiteman over the boundary. We're going to have a kick in, free to the Danilde Port side. Sturt under enormous pressure at the moment. Bo did the right thing, tried to send the ball into the corridor, obviously got punched out. They're getting a lot of ball use from Cranston at the moment. It's only early in the game. I reckon Rick McGowan will be looking for a ruck change or telling Feasty to pick up his game. Murphy with the long kick in. They have a couple at the front. One of them was Grimer. And Rick McGowan, you can imagine, will be on the phone about that too because there was really not much of a contest and Grimer got good support. Might have been Kirk, who came from behind, just protected him. Well, you can see there two third players just gave Grimer too much space. You only have to be off your man by a metre. By the time he gets a run and jump, it's out to a metre and a half, and that's exactly what happened there. Grimer, he's kicked over 50 goals this year. He's been very influential for Glenelg. 52, in fact. And now he has 53. Just snuck it in there. And what a start for the Bays in the preliminary final. Well, they've bounced back, haven't they? Last week they were really disappointing. Obviously, the coaching staff have fired them up. And the players probably want to make amends for last week, I'm sure. In fact, they want to make amends. And you can see that the way they're going about it, they're getting in first. Stoppage work, forwards, all in front, playing in front. At the moment, Sturt are just on their heels. And as we speak, Soda said that Code was playing forward. Well, Rick McGowan's made a move and pushing him deep into defence to go back and play on Grimer now. DeLuca in ruck. Trying to feed it out. Fisher wrapped up. Comes out, back well, and have a throw up. Robert, I just wonder if last week the game was almost too easy for Sturt in terms of the fact the margin perhaps inflated where they were at. Is that one of those flatness things you can take in? Well, it could possibly be, but at the moment you, you just look at the way the stoppages are going and Glenelg are in front. They're getting their hands on the ball first and, and Trevor Cranston's doing a great job to give his on-ballers first use of the ball. The Luca, it's coming out there, Sheedy. Arming it out over the top, just misses its target. Hinge leading in the race for the ball, paddles it over the boundary line, throw in. And a couple of early fumbles for Sturt. Looking to settle. DeLuca and Cranston. DeLuca bustles him out of it, hands off to Crane. It's going to land just in front of Wicks, going over the top. Looking for the one-two, switches in. He's got Cabillo all by himself and spots him. Well, it was just nice work from the stoppage there. Wicks positioned himself in the centre of the ground, positioned himself in a very dangerous position. He was the first one in the chain of possessions. And as you can see there, Cubillo just standing outside or inside the 50, about 40, out straight in front with no real direct opponent. Took an easy mark. Touched on Tristan Gum spending time on North Adelaide's list. So did Josh Cabillo, of course. Lining up the double blues first goal. Splits the centre. That's a set win now for Sturt. 1 2 8. Cornell 2 3 15. Well, Sturt just needed that. It's only early in the game. We're only at the 13 minute mark, but they just needed to get a couple of clean possessions. You can see there Crane to Wicks. Hand pass over the top, and Cubillo is just going to be. Sitting there, uncontested mark. The reason why that happened, the Glenelg player had to push up to try to tackle, I think it was Wicks, and left his man. And obviously, Cubillo just by himself and finished off with a nice goal. Just his second goal of the season. Josh Cubillo. So now seven points to the margin. And, well, I'm surprised. I thought DeLuca may have been penalised then. Thompson came off the square and went at Holmes. Murphy, meanwhile, got it down to half forward. Code, brilliant. On the run was Wicks. He missed him, but he's got support and he's got time. Can pick it up and go inboard. Does with a lovely little kick. It just doesn't quite make it for Crane. Flying across Crane was Cranston, who now takes his time and drops it in short for Holmes. Holmes can go for Pinozzo out the back, square. And that's where eventually he will go. Pinozzo's got room to move now once he grabs the ball. Backwell wants it. He won't go that short. It's one-on-one -on -one down the ground. Pinozzo will bounce his way forward, then go over the top for Backwell in trouble. Duck the hit. Perry got him. Umpire said, throw it in. Well, if that's not holding the ball, I don't know what is. Backwell had an opportunity to move the ball on, dodge ball. He ducked his head. Lucky he didn't get his head taken off, to be honest. It was a nice tackle by Perry. Cranston, speaking of nice tackles, he took down Whiteman. 
Allen forced his way through brilliantly. Bo Ruwalt. Then a great hand pass from Backwell to the long kicking, beautiful kick of Holmes. Did he run too far? He got chased down by McGlone. Turnover. Team lifter from Scott McGlone. Any inspirational stuff from the former South Adelaide defender switching over. Code. He's got Sheedy over the top. Hits him. Keeps it out towards Gum. What? Wicks crumbs beautifully. Takes a bounce. He's getting the benefit of a shepherd. He's going to want to centre it to Chambers. Punched away by Rudolph. Murphy. No, now they're building some run again, the Tigers. They're irresistible coming out of defence. Goes over Farmer's head. Willoughby. Pops over the top by hand. Grimer takes a bounce. We haven't called that many times this year. Takes a second bounce. He's going to want to finish it. And he does. Todd Grimer. Magnificent run. That's his second goal. Well, it was somewhat unorthodox. You can see the ball bouncing there favourably for Glenelg. He knew Code was probably half a yard quicker than him, but he just kept changing his line, making it near on impossible for Code to catch him. And he's obviously not the quickest player because he's pretty happy and pretty pumped after that goal. Todd Griner comes from a Premiership family. Nathan playing in the Central District Premiership last year. He played in the Geelong VFL Premiership last year. And he's got a brother on Hawthorne's rookie list and of course they won a Premiership yesterday. Ball down long again for the Bays. Doldig took it and was surrounded. He'll eventually get a ball up. McClay doing the bulk of the tackling there. Of course, you can add to that the uh, silver medal for Sister Holly in Beijing. Oh, I had that down. I didn't get to it. Rubel at the front of the pack. Another one for the Bays. Oh, what a brilliant start this has been for the Bays. Well, it all comes back to their stoppage work. Here's another goal created by some great work around the stoppage. You can see there, Glenel got the tap. And Ruwal was clever enough to push off his opponent, gather the ball and snap around the cor corner. Glenel just getting first use of the ball. Trevor Cranston hasn't come off the ground yet. He's been rucking the entire quarter. Glenel have had 52 possessions to Sturt 24. The Luca and Cranston. The Luca gets the knock and rows it himself. Wicks. Gets a lot of uncontested possession. Wixby makes them count. Whiteman going over the top. Thompson back to Whiteman. Oh, he's going to be set up on. Taken high. Play on an advantage. Thompson unloads from the 50 and splits the centre. Adam Thompson, classy crumbing work. And he finishes off with his first goal for the day. Well, it was a nice play by Thompson, but to be brutally honest, that was a very, very poor tackle by Matthew Bode. He had to get lower there. If he'd got low, Whiteman would have been caught holding the ball. But as it turns out, a very lazy tackle, too high. The ball spilled. Advantage was given to Sturt. Thompson finished with a nice goal. 13 points the margin as the umpire comes in. Seb Painter has been thrown into the middle for the double blues. Sheedy. Cabillo, they work it forward. Pinozzo leads to the ball. Whiteman will chase. He's not a player who's going to give up. He put in the big dive, put the pressure on. Ball out of bounds. Pies, you made the call to uh, change the ruck for Sturt early and get DeLuca in there with his height. Cranston, we know, is a fantastic competitor, but uh, DeLuca certainly has the edge on the height, and it's paying off too. DeLuca this time. Cranston perhaps had the better of it. Clearance. Well done by the Bays. Fisher went to Kane off the left foot. Inside 50, he looked, and Code came late on Grimer. Dolder got it to Grimer. To Fisher, he followed up pretty well. Farmer taken down, so the Fisher and the Farmer come together. <laughs> Good crowd here in this afternoon. At the beautiful Adelaide Oval. Another stoppage situation. DeLuca palmed it down. Kirkby. Lally, swung, 360, umpire calls play on. Players crowd around, we'll get another ball up, will we? Yes, we will. On defensive 50 for the double blues. Tom Holmes in there, wasn't born the last time that Glenelg won a flag. There's seven players in today's lineup that were born in 86 or later. The Glenelg, Gum. Oh, all Glenelg back here, Mules. 
Switching it into the centre. He's going to want to sit for Sherwood. He does. It's nice mark by Sherwood. If Sturt player had spoiled that, they were away. Murphy. Lovely pass. That's going to be a free and 50 there on 025 right on Rally. Well, the free kick was definitely there. Josh Kibbelow coming off for a spell. Free kick by Nelson. Pushing the back, a clear push in the back. Richard Williams standing about 10 metres away. Didn't have any hesitation in calling that for 25. Lally, three goals won this year. Not known as a ball magnet. Average is just under seven possessions a match. This will be a critical one, though, if he can slot it home. It's on its way. Bit of an ordinary one. Perhaps that's why he's not noted in front of the goals, Rob. Well, that was a pick of the kick, wasn't it? A very lackadaisical. Strolled in with no real intent and paid the price. Into time on now, 14 points, the Bay's leading. Huge kick in. DeLuca at the back should take it. Got rid of his man nicely, dropped the ball. Following up McClay. There was a free kick in there to Thompson, or rather Whiteman. So Whiteman. And that'll be 25 as well. Fisher wandered over the mark only by a step or two, but it was pretty clear to the umpire, and that's why we'll get 25. Harsh penalty for just a really minor error, but you can see he takes a couple of steps forward. He comes back and then went forward. Long kick inside forward, 50. Strong mark taken by Hinge. Played one AFL game for Adelaide. Takes his time. They've been very good back here, the base. Back well out the back. Hinge was the option. Decided to go to Sherwood. To back well again. The kick was pretty good. Doldy up from half forward. Kane's in the middle. Has a look, decides against it. Down the line he goes. McGlone was at the front. Grimer was late. McGlone, once he regained his feet, he was right, and he can take the kick. <laughs> it was pretty awkward from Scott McGlone. Probably won't look back on that as one of his better coordinated efforts. Now, double blues have been held up by the Tigers' defensive efforts. Almost a mark. Middle of the pack, Fittick was there briefly. Allen got it off to Holmes, grubbed it along the boundary line well for Kirkby, then Bowed. No, it was Hinge. The blind turn was brilliant, filled everybody. Grimer, now Willoughby. Now Allen, one of his few kicks, but one of his good kicks into the path of Hinge. He missed him. McDonald came in, was held. It'll be play on advantage, the double blues, and they'll run it from half back. Coming out. Can you go on the on the grandstand side? Spots up Crane. Turns onto the right for the eye at McGarry Middlest. Plenty of Tigers back here. Paul Sherwood at the forefront. Poor choice of kick by Crane. It was a three on two situation. Sherwood was the spare man. Just really blazed away. Grand Chambers didn't lead hard enough. That was the other alternative that was needed from Sturt's point of view. Chambers hasn't had a, had really had a sniff yet. Kirk at the front. Drops into Code's hands. Well, Todd Grime is appealing for a push in the back, but call it good body work by Code or a push. He took the mark. Gum. Still a long way out from goal. They're dropping numbers back into Chambers' leading space, but they've left Deluca by himself. Well, look, Deluca was smart enough then not to go back to the goal square. Daniel Kirk, his direct opponent, was drifting back to try to double-team Brant Chambers. Fabian DeLuca just drifted forward to take an easy mark. Having Mist said that, he missed the him. mark. <laughs> well, yeah, mistook him for the light tower, perhaps. <laughs> Let's see his goal kicking goes. Two goals, three for the season. And he keeps it the wrong side of symmetry, unfortunately. Two goals, four for the season. Sturt, two, three. Glenelg, four, four. That well, was a beautiful kick off the boot. Struck it well, but... Wynn just slightly got hold of it and pushed it to the left. Just a lull as Rudolph takes his time. Told to bring it in in a hurry. Outer side would obviously be the defensive side this afternoon. Sherwood couldn't take it, but Kurt was awarded the mark. I'm sure Sherwood had some good purchase on that ball just for a moment. So Daniel Kirk. He goes long and direct. McGlode will fly with the punch from behind or the mark. He went for the mark. Is it play on advantage because Kirkby got a free kick for a push? So Rory Kirkby, the return of Sherwood 
means that Kirkby can go forward and he is the lead up target for the base. Long kick inside forward 50 code. One grab couldn't bring it to the ground. Now Willoughby's tackled to the ground and Code will protest. I had two grabs of that ball. Won't help him much. So he's stirred with the clearance. They use it well and Wicks who's gaining plenty of possessions on that outer wing. In board he went for McDonald. The left footer needs a kind bounce. Allen got him. Allen got him. We'll have a ball up. Another team lifter for the Bays. Ty Allen just absolutely thumped with the tackle. Mules. And Mules. after all that, it was Benny Mills, the skipper. Well, they're both tough players, <laughs> so you can make the mistake. That is how you tackle. Any juniors watching football, watching ABC today, have a look at that. Beautiful tackle. Yeah. Putting it again at the stoppages. Comes up towards Perry. Just drops straight into his lap. Oh, he's looking to give it off quickly, but he's going to go back and have a shot. This is why Sturt are so dangerous. They have two very potent forwards, Ian Perry and Brant Chambers. If they can get enough of the ball and get it forward and give them an opportunity to kick goals, they will. Beast coming on for DeLuca as we speak. Perry lining up. Just to narrow the margin to seven points. Splits the centre. That's the reason Sturt changed him so hard after he retired from AFL. It's his first goal of the day. Good play by Sturt. They needed that. You can see here. Quick kick out of the pack. Ian Perry playing in front. Nice chest mark. And so does. We had a bet a couple of weeks ago, and uh, this time round, I can see you've won the bet for the most ridiculous attire. Take an easy prize. You just worry about the game. You're doing a beautiful job with your uh, commentary. Just uh, stay down that line. We'll get a shot of that shirt. Looks like you're wearing a Pizza Hut tablecloth. <laughs> you are an idiot. Cranston and Evans took it away. Cranston had first purchase. Perry again. Well, if Chambers don't get you, Perry will apparently. Well, take two. Quick kick out of the pack. Stoppage. Ball up in the centre of the ground. Perry playing in front. Nice hands. Perry sprays the kick, though. Lets himself down. Takes his record this afternoon to one goal, two. Perry, of course, completes the trifecta of North Adelaide players who have crossed over to the Double Blues. It's been a fair bit of time on their list. Looking to bring the ball back into play now, the Tigers. Hinge is moving out in the pocket. Ignores that completely and keeps it on the outer side. Murphy, good mark. Took the fly and backed himself off to Backwell. Wouldn't mind his stats a minute, actually. Ian Mogridge passes further down. Spots up, comes back, Fisher, further down, hits up block, turns and wheels onto that right foot, they're going long and deep, Grimer at the back, couldn't hold it, Farmer, mops up the crumbs, he's got Kubilo moving for him, isolates him, he's got plenty of teammates lining up for it, McDonald switches back into the centre, over to Sheedy, Comes back to Evans. Now yeah, they're building through McLone. Going long. Fiddix out there. And he hits him. No. Play on. Ball can almost get a free to his back on it. Siren sounds. A little bit of feeling there after the siren. Bunnell got 4 4 28 Sturt. 3 4 22. Quarter time of the preliminary final here on ABC TV. Well, as you would expect, both teams very fired up. Quarter time break. A little bit of frustration creeping into the game. A great preliminary final, or a great start to the preliminary final. Glenelg got off to a fly. Their stoppage work, their on-ballers were very good very early in that game. Sturt, to their credit, they bounced back late in that quarter with a couple of quick kick forwards. Their forwards playing in front. Perry finished with one nice goal and then sprayed the other one. One goal the difference at quarter time as we look through what unfolded and Matthew Bode was on the board early. It's a class player, Bloat, and he needs to be able to kick goals in the forward line. That's exactly what his role is for Glenelg. Crumb the forward, tackle and chase, make sure he's at the right position for the crummers. On that occasion, you can see there's some Glenelg players waiting for the crumb, but Todd Grimer, nice hands. He started the game very well. That was his first one. Sturgis started to bounce back halfway through that 
first quarter. Wicks positioned himself well. Jubilo found himself with some space. Finished with a nice goal, not a renowned goal kicker. And Glenel ran from the back line. Sherwood, who had a bit of an injury cloud throughout the week, it was an ungr ugly mongrel punt. Todd Grimer got hold of it, and he really thought this well. Thought that he couldn't outrun Cope, but just did enough to move off of the line, kick the goal. Poor tackle by Bode. As a result, Thompson finished with a goal. And that goal just bringing them back in touch at quarter time. Six points the margin. As we mentioned, Grimer there with two goals and Ian Perry a chance in that quarter to make up for the fact that Brad Chambers was being marked well and couldn't get near the ball. Ended up with 1-2 for the quarter as we go through those stats. What do you make of them? Well, if you can, if you have a look at the kicks and handballs, you can see there that uh, Glenelg dominated that for most of the quarter. They were on 88, and you can see there Sturt, they were on set 60. They were very good early, Glenelg. Sturt bounced back, and if you have a look at the centre breaks, they're three all there. There's some great work done by Glenelg around the stoppages, and that's where they got all of their ball use. And of course, uh, Sturt and Glenelg chasing a berth in the grand final here in the SANFL. The WAFL grand final was last weekend. Subiaco had lost only one game all season. They were taking on the only side that had beaten them all season, Swan Districts in the grand final. Let's see what happened. The kick up towards Mapleston. He couldn't take the mark. Chance now for Broadhurst. Chips the hand pass off to Cocky. Under pressure. Put the left boot onto it, but it's going to be the quick reply. But Spanderman takes the spilled ball, gives it out wide to Roberts, who centres it. They need a mark here. It's taken by Corbin, waiting wide from Williams. Williams gives it back to him. Corbin gathers it. Banfield, can he snap a goal? Sends it on its way. That's a great goal by the youngster. Swan District supporters delirious. They go to a two-goal lead. 21 and a half minutes gone in the first quarter. Did the right thing to knock it at the back of the pack, but Hildebrand was there. Here's an Aaron hand pass. It goes to Roberts. Roberts just dribbles the ball through. Parker from behind, Spanderman in front. Garlett, last kick of the quarter, perhaps. Oh. Scott across his body. They've got six. Richardson has it. Great spoil by McKinlay, but Richardson loses it. Cocky seizes the opportunity. Kicks to Smith. Brad Smith. Hand passes to Mapleston. Mapleston just finding too much room. This time in the goal square. And he hammers it through for the Lions. He's got his second. Socket off the ground square by Beros. Getting there first will be... Subiaco's Hildebrandt by hand to Cossum, a natural left footer and a brilliant finish. Still too far out to score, long kick inside attacking 50, can they take a big grab? Well they can. Schofield from the defensive 50 at centre half back goes over the centre circle by one hander taken by Brad Smith. Out towards right half forward. Gapen is up forward. Behind him flying Johnson. No one got a hand on it. Gapen the better recovery. Hand pass to Wolfenden. 40 out and closing. What's the finish like? It's good. Wolfenden kicks the goal. The margin reduced to 31 points as he gets his first. He may sell himself into trouble. Gets around Cossum. Gets around Haynes. Gets to 25 and kicks it. Swan districts in front position, Richardson paddled it for Roberts to Taylor, Taylor ran into Cocky, ball jars free by Alistair Pickett, slick hands, going to Hildebrandt and Hildebrandt finishes it for the Lions. 70 metres out, Mapleston should mark and he does, now he's got Smith running back towards the goal square, he kicks it though into the goal square itself, Reed. oh he's done it David Beckham. David, that's better than Beckham. He's got it on the half volley and has put it through with the inside of the right boot. He gets his second. So in the end, a big win for Subiaco by 57 points, Swan Districts. There is a connection there with Sturt. In fact, the 1998 Sturt Grand Final player, Adam Lane, captain of Swan Districts, missed the Grand Final with a broken collarbone. All right, back to the match here. And there's only six points, the difference in favour of the Tigers at quarter time, Sodas. 
Yes, over at the Glenelg Cuddle, Mark Lickham was wrapped with the intensity. Obviously, before the game, he got into his players about keeping the ball in, in the stoppages, not letting Sturt flick out that little handball and release to get things moving there. So happy with the way they work. Also, their tackling pressure last week against Central District, they were smashed in the tackling count, something like 28 to 52. So he was a lot happier with the way they've gone about that today, the way they've started. Over at Sturt, well, Rick McGowan disappointed with Brand Chambers, just lack of discipline in the forward line, giving away a free kick. He said it's too hard to get it in there. Don't let it out too easy. And there was also a couple of players, he said you took your eye off the ball. Never, ever take the eye off the ball at the Sturt Footy Club. That's a key rule. He said uh, disappointed with them. Just having a little look around. Sturt. Average more possessions than any other SNFL team and more marks. 325 and 96 respectively. They're a long way down on their average so far. Glenelg oh, get the centre clearance. Just punched away from it. There was Ruwald. Going to travel over the boundary line. Speaking of stats, Ian Mogwich, have a leading possession. Get us in that first term, please. Yes, uh, Chris, for the Tigers, Brett Backwell had nine, three and six. Adam Fisher had seven, as did Matthew Bode and Byron Murphy. For Sturt, Jay Cheedy had six, as did Tristan Gum and Daniel Wicks. Painter, it's a bit of a sloppy kick. Just goes over Murphy's head. He tries to go back in Cranston, bundles it over the boundary line. Yeah, we touched on back while well, nine disposal. It was not as penetrating as we used to, a lot of handball. Chris, you mentioned a uh, statistic there. Well, out of the ten major stats that the SANFL keeps, stirred are better than Glenelg in nine of them. There's only one where Glenelg is better, and that's ball efficiency. Ah, uh, possessions per uh, scoring shots. They're certainly doing well on that today. Free kick to Sheedy. Yeah, they average 10.8 in that respect, and they're spot on that average at the moment. Oh, lurking out the back here is Perry. Needs to sit. Glenelg have got plenty of numbers. They're going to run it out. Green Mules keeps on the outer side. Uh, moving all by himself. It's the mouse in plenty of space. Backwell takes a second bounce. Takes a third bounce. The 06 McGarry medalist takes a fourth. Spears it into the forward 50. And he spots up Kirkby right on the chest. We had plenty of time to summarise the situation. Backwell, he had been Kane that was inside the corridor screaming for the handball over the top, decided to ignore him. Past the daisy cutter, Rory Kirkby acted quick enough to turn around and take the mark. Coming up for his first kick today. It's on its way and he slips it through for a major. Just opens the gap out again for the Tigers, 12 points. That's a key forward. They are the goals you do need to kick. A lot of work goes into getting the ball forward. See, Glenelg got a break on the fat side of the ground. Had time and space. Backwell's a class player, we know that. He assessed the situation very well. Daisy cut it to Kirkby. And as a key forward, you need to kick them. There's nothing worse from a midfielder's point of, point of view. You've done all the hard work, got the ball in the forward area, and your forwards let you down with the lazy kick. Feast, lovely tap, shooting. And what did the umpire spot off the ball? He spotted something off the ball and he's come in and he's picked on Whiteman and it'll go as a free kick to Block for the base. So Block will get the free kick. Pinozzo's leaked out the side and got space. Pinozzo can go all the way with the bruise. On 50, the shot's away and the kick is awkward and floats for the minus score. Great chance. And the Block base just could not capitalise. Good work by Pinozzo to find himself free. Right decision, just wrong execution. Free on Backwell. Pinozzo, 14th in the league for disposals. Not a bad effort. Free is with Backwell. He's the second highest for Glenelg. Adam Fisher first, 13th on the list. Backwell going long. Could have been a free, and it is. On Kirkby. He'll be lining up for his second shot inside three minutes. Well, you can see there, Code's arguing his case was a hip and shoulder, but quite clearly, you can't take your eye off the ball and cannon into your opponent. Rory Kirkby on the penetrating left foot, kicks on its way, swung it back beautifully, read the win perfectly, open some argument to 19 points. Well, used the bruise very well, beautiful wind swinger for a left foot, didn't strike the ball perfectly, but you can see when that ball turns into a helicopter, it does swing inwards. Free kick definitely there. Code took his eye off the ball, looked at his direct opponent, cannon into him. The umpire paid the free kick. Second goal in the space of three or four minutes, Rory Kirkby. 
Of course, he was sent into defence last week with the absence of Sherwood. We've already mentioned that. This week, back where he does his best work, obviously, throughout the season. And is that another free kick? Well, it's gone over the back. Farmer will have to rush it. Clever work from Mitch Farmer. Held off his opponent. Got the ball and just rushed it through quickly for the minor score. And Lally looks like he's got some real problems down there. I'd suggest leg because he doesn't want to get up so it's obviously an ankle or a knee so they're one man down at the moment mark taken by mcclay coming up for his first kick of the day had two handballs spots up walk passing over oh, mcclay working his way into a bit of strife kicks it out to feast just beats him murphy Fisher takes it over the boundary. No, keeps it in. Double blues. Getting some run in their legs now. Switches back. Whiteman. Oh, he's dispossessed. Holding the ball. Lovely tackle. And end up with Fisher. Newell's moving for him. He's also got a hinge calling in the centre. Keeps it on the outer side. There, Kirkby again, punched out the back. Going to go over for a throw-in. Going to have a look at what happened to Lally there. Yep, seemed like oh, he was clutching for the knee. Yep. Get an update from Sodas on that shortly. Nell going deep into attack. Kirkby again. Good strong mark taken by Code. And he'll relieve from the back pocket. Total want to switch the ball and he looked initially to this side of the ground nothing available in the end very static the double blues at the back long and at the back sheet he just couldn't reach over and grab it Cranston released it to block in short he went quickly for both on 50 to Rootwell over the top again he goes a fumble at just the wrong time by Willoughby Farmer was taken down was he without the ball the umpire said play it on it's over the boundary line we can see Glenelg prepared to throw the ball about around Willoughby spent the ball before he took full possession Feast laid it down Rootwell took advantage and just kicked it for the minus score on the snap Nothing much in that. Bit of a concern for Sturt. Rick McGowan would be very concerned with the stoppage work inside the forward 50. Glenelg have had three shots, clear shots on goal from some nice stoppage work, nice ruck work. Finding players free around the stoppage area and being able to have a shot at goal. Walk takes the mark from the kick in. Over the top to McGlone. Billow or Evans are options. Wants to go longer. I reckon that's going to be out in the full. Better take the free. Be Murphy. They just look a little bit unsettled at the moment, Stu. They try and find some rhythm. Murphy plays on. He's got McDonald bearing down on him. Kicks it up towards the hot spot. Surely not Kirkby again. Goldig. Matty Goldig lining up for his first shot at gold. Open right the margin out to 27 points. Well, Glenelg were able to play on because Sturt tried to make an interchange which left nobody on the mark and Matthew Doldick just took a far too easy mark. Nicholas Walk needs to put body on body. Kicks on its way. Wrong side of the post. 22 point margin. We saw yesterday in the AFL Grand Final, if you miss goals that are gimmies, such as that one, you may well pay the ultimate price. Double Blues struggling to get out of defence at the moment. McGlone and Murphy will come. He was kicking for Whiteman, who didn't give up on the ball, and that's why he's forced to bounce. Well, the kick, Whiteman was running back into space. Murphy read it early. And Whiteman kept at it, and now we'll hand the ball to the umpire for the ball down in front of the members' stand, which is pretty crowded this afternoon. Kane, the ball popped out the back. Cranston was tackled. Got it away to Allen. He goes for Grimer, coming the other way. There was a push anyway. Well, there was a push from the back, signaled the umpire, and coming straight at the player, Grimer, was McGlone. As you can see there, Scott McGlone, you really have to face the ball. 
otherwise the umpire will ping you every time. Glenelg have had 22 inside 50s compared to Sturt, who have only had 12. Glenelg have had 14 scoring shots on goal. Eight of those have been points. Inside 50 this quarter, Rob, 8-1. to one. He has two goals, and he won't add to it with that. Walk was awake to it, took the ball, released it quickly by hand. They'll get out of trouble, will they? McClay. All the double blues now appear to be nervous. Thompson dropped it short, Evans wanted to play on quickly. Gum. Down the line he went, Kane intercepted it. Still found some room to move. Painter can't shut him down, he gets it back into the middle. Dangerous kick, Nelson. Forward he goes, Cabello. And now the long striding, long kicking McDonald. He ran a long way and he ran too far and he kicked the goal. It won't count, it'll come back in. McDonald just couldn't make the right decision. No, he was in two minds. Should I bounce? Then kick. Decided no. Glenelg player was cutting in on his right hand side, so he didn't bounce the ball. Unfortunately, ran too far. And I was able to take the free at half back. I've kept it on the outer side a lot today, both teams. Block. Just he's smothered the handball. Out of bounds. So does Angus Lally down there. How's he going with that knee? Just been taken down to the change rooms in a fair bit of uh, trouble there. The medical staff just shaking their head. They spent a bit of time just assessing the uh, structural integrity of the joint, moving it around, and uh, he doesn't look to be good. I don't think we'll see him back, but we'll give you an update at halftime. Uh, down to two on the bench, probably you'd say, for Glenelg. Free kick going to the double blues. Free kicks have been 8-6 Glenelg's way thus far. Handballed off to Thompson. Perry couldn't quite juggle it. Whiteman read it neatly off the pack. Looking for Chambers. Rudolph in front. Couldn't mark it, but he brought it to ground. Now he comes out by hand. Gum. Sloppy handball. They're trying to break away the Tigers. Cabello in there. Could have taken higher free. No free. Full credit to Glenelg at present. Their tackling has been very sound today. Make the coaching staff happy. Bode, gum, mules wrapped up. Right up. Sturt would be very happy at the moment that Glenelg aren't kicking straight. It's the only reason why they're still in the game. Just notice Backwell lurking by himself at the back. If they can get it to him, they'll be away. Another stoppage, another ball up. Majority of the stoppage is the Glenelg players are occupying front position. That's why they're getting their hands on the ball. Something that Sturt need to address. Luca and Cranston. We're free to Glenelg. Interference at the ruck contest. Cranston. Hands off to Bode. Takes a bounce. Spins around. It's a very small arc. Takes it further afield to Fisher in the back pocket. He's got Bode over the top again, but he wants to go longer than that. Keeps out to Kane. Backwell, ridden into the ground. Free kick. And Backwell will relieve at half back. Goes defensively back inside their defensive okay. arc. Hinge and then Pinozzo. One on one ahead of him. So he tries to bounce around. Garner almost brought him down. In fact, he did. According to the umpire, he was holding the tackle at the right time when the bounce was happening. The kick into McDonald. And McDonald will line up from 40 metres straight in front. Well, that was just a brain explosion by Pinozzo. He knew he was going to get around him. He's strong through the hips, but somewhat casual in the thinking area to bounce the ball because as soon as you bounce the ball and the opposition player lays hands on you, it's holding the ball. What's he like with a set shot, McDonald? He kicked 4-1 last week in his first game for the year. And he's kicked that one straight as well. So the young man from Bridgewater is certainly enjoying September. He is. His two games for the year. Getting some good rewards from his possessions. Pinozzo balked around him. He really had him beat. There was no need to bounce the ball. He'd only taken five or six steps. First thing you learn as a footballer, run your full yardage before you bounce the ball. Why put the ball on the ground when it's already in your hands? Yeah, McDonald kicked three, one of those in a burst of eight minutes in the third term. As Neil mentioned from the Raiders, Bridgewater in Hill Central Division. Thompson. 
but it's sharp by Bode. Now they're starting to run through Kane. Going up towards centre half forward, all double blues, plenty of them, McClay. Looking to switch again, he's got Thompson, he's got DeLuca, DeLuca gets it. Goes for, a, oh, goes for the hand, Thompson, good enough to recover. Oh, he's put his team under the pump though. Starting to muck around a little bit with it. Cranston, one of the smaller kicks, it might just register as a step. Farmer, ridden into the turf. Cranston just wanted to get the ball out of that stoppage area or out of the congestion from the players. But now we've had about four players sitting on the outer side just waiting for the ball to bubble out. Luca. Into attack again. Bouncing. Good work from McCoy. Oh, slipped over Code. Trying to get rid of it. Bunnell, we've got numbers at the back here all by themselves if they can get it there. Gum taken off it. Kane. Now it comes out. Ruwald has a snap. Trying to dispossess it. Snap. Dolding. Touched. He's had a pretty important last few minutes, Dolding. Some good agility shown by Dolding. He's a big fellow. Pushed McGlone out of the way and then recovered very quickly. 17 the margin. Wicks couldn't pull it in. Kane and attacking the ball hard was Nelson. And Kane went back at him. The umpire said I'll have it. You can just feel the intensity level has lifted. What's it like down there on the ground, Sodas? Yeah, look, it's red hot. We're starting to see a few players fumble too. Uh, Sturt before Mitch Farmer gave a handball to a bloke who was under a lot of pressure. So Sturt just looked like they're feeling the heat at the moment. Glenel coping with the best. Kirkby got one high, said the umpire. Richard Williams comes in and Rory Kirkby will take another shot at goal. Well, he's got a height advantage on Whiteman. See if we can see that again. The umpire wasn't too far away. Kirkby with two in the quarter thus far. And he starts it. Two wide, swings across in the end and only just makes it in for the minor score. The Bays have kicked six goals. Ten. Let's have another look. Free kick will come here. Big punch from Code. Rory Kirkby takes possession of the ball and slightly over the shoulder, so right decision. Farmer attack in the mark. It's been reversed to Ruwald. Indicating there was interference in the marking contest. A very interesting decision. Ruwald takes a bounce, sells himself into trouble. Bow waiting on the outside for the crumbs. Nelson in there. Nelson wrap him up in a tackle. Seen two incidents in this quarter where players have bounced the ball when they've had no need to. On a breakaway again, the double blues, but the stoppage. But those players have probably not made that mistake all year. Just the intensity of the game, the crowd, brain just not functioning as it should. Cubalo read it very neatly. Nelson, Whiteman, Thompson. He hasn't really got anywhere to go now, except for straight into a Glenelg opponent and it's a free to the Tigers. Now I was very critical of Matthew Boat previously for his tackle. That one there is the perfect tackle. Got low, drove with his legs. See here, Boat nice and low through the shoulder into him, holding the ball. Picks it up. All oh, double blows. Oh, McLean spilled it. Block out to Kane. Has a shot. Go! Critical fumble by McLean. And that gives the Tigers a 24-point lead. Well, the reality was that that was a poor kick by Bode, but good luck to Glenelg. Poor mistake by McGlone, and the Glenelg players will make him pay and make Sturt play. Nice kick there by Ben Kane under enormous pressure. Had a player coming from the back and another one crunching in from the front as he kicked the ball. Well, the side that's... Had the best attack and best defence all year. The double blues, they need a lift desperately. Cranston out of the middle wide with the hand past Pinozzo. He's got time. He goes for Doldig on the lead up. He won't get there. Half volleyed it. No, the umpire said that was a mark. So Matthew Doldig will go back and put his side into attack. He was going to go for Grimer. Decided against it, now just pumps it long and one of the worst kicks you'll see all afternoon. Flying high was Ruwalt. Back wall was taken.
in the ground and the umpire will come in, Tony Day, and throw the ball up on attacking 50 for the Bays. And boy, did he get a lift. Ruwalt was a kangaroo. Not saying they haven't deserved him, but Glenelg have had 11 free kicks this quarter alone. What the guy? Well, they're getting the run at the moment. DeLuca, and there are a lot of players around this ball. And off the front of the pack for the Bays, there is space to run into. Let's see if they get third man up. Stoppage, 55 metres out. Double Blues need to get something on the scoreboard. The game is eking away from them. Perry, Evans, read it beautifully. Thompson, he's got Crane breaking for him. Want to get a coin bounce, does. Has a snap, it's coming back. Rudolph. And it's going to be 25. Well, I just wonder if Grant Chambers is fully fit. it's going to be another 25. Because he does not want to lead. Rudolph is playing in front. Free kick. Takes the mark. Push in the back. Free kick. 25. Then gets another one for good measure. Chambers needs to lead. Sturt need to look up and see him in front on every occasion. Chambers just threw Murphy off it quite unnecessarily, I would have thought. So Rudolph. No one behind him. Play on, play on. It's called to play on. Breaks it onto the outer side. It'll pop up for Pinozzo. Goes further down. Murphy just over his head. Thompson can't keep it in. Yeah, Chambers does look a little frustrated. Well, the dragging Grant Chambers as we speak. The crowd certainly finding that amusing. There he is there. You don't see that too often. Moggy, I don't reckon he's had a possession yet. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, just a one handball, Chris. So I corrected you because you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ian Moggridge. <laughs> Coming over. Another ball up. Brent Chambers is the star full forward. He's been the leading goal kicker for a number of years for Sturt Football Club. He just needs to compose himself on the bench, make sure... But he's ready to go for the second half. Fabian DeLuca's gone to the goal square. That might stretch Rudolph. Bit of a mismatch, but Rudolph has got a very good reach. Danger in that, Chris, is Rudolph may well run off. That's his strength, his running ability. That's true. I don't think we'll see DeLuca taking on Bolt in the 08 Olympics. Not at the 100 metres anyway. Another ball up. Cranston. Little dinky kick by hand. Willoughby, another ball up. All pretty even back there. Four players in the arc for Sturt. Murphy. It's going to be a free to the double blues. For a throw that must have hurt you, Moggy. Adam Thompson. He's come into it a bit more in the second term. Going deep into attack. Perry at the back. Can't quite hold it. Murphy just goes to ground. Bundle it over the boundary line. You'd think the Tigers are going to have a throw up. Glenelg's midfielders are doing a fantastic job, not only stopping players such as Crane and Sheedy, Sturt players, but they're getting a lot of the ball themselves. Currently got 138 possessions compared to Sturt, 104. Pinozzo for Backwell. Farmer chases, look out. Big Shepherd was tried by Willoughby, he missed him. Grimer held his feet, Code didn't. Off to Backwell, still running and now Kane. Down the outer wing, Evans comes at him, but he gets the kick away for Doldig. Fit up came late, Doldig held the ground again. Doldig into open goal, should kick it, does. Well, the Bays have put a gap in this one. It's out to 30 points. Spoke about Doldig's agility. Only 10 minutes ago, this time, we see his ability to be able to read the ball quicker than his opponent. He could see it was out of reach of both he and his direct opponent. Doubled back inside him, gathered possession, thought it through very well, didn't panic, check sider, nice finish. The last 16 minor premiers have made it into the grand final. Boating well for Glenelg at this stage. Sturt need to find a spark from somewhere. 27 inside 50 to Glenelg, Sturt 16. Feast. Allen just gets the handball away. I don't think he's been his normal prolific self today, Moggy. Ty Allen. 
No, Chris. Two and six. Eight disposals. We're in third in the McGarry medal. Got a blood rule. And looks to be Adam Fisher. Now it's Simon Feast, as a matter of fact. So Bryant Chambers has been released from his penance and goes back down to full forward. Luca goes into the rut, as we'd expect. Just trying to get it out of there, Sturt. Nothing doing. The ball up on the edge of half time. And Elb leading by 30 points. See it, Whiteman coming off for McDonald. Now they're clearing it further down. McDonald's actually lurking at the fall of this. Perry's ridden off it. Glenelg again, though. Gee, they're good at the stoppages, aren't they? Panozzo going over the top. Mules. Oh, he pirouetted very neatly. Now it's going to end up with Kane. Twisting, turning, looking for something to present, and it does. Going further afield. Grime is in the perfect position. Kobe was in a better one. Now he's switching across. Should hit up Wicks. It doesn't. He's isolated Allen, however. This will be just outside his range. Looking for something in the forward 50 to move. Hinge breaks to his left. He's got Ruwald moving for it. Gets him. And that was on Robert for an awfully long time. It was. At first, I didn't I didn't think that he had spotted Ruwald, but he was clear, and that's poor manning up by Sturt. The defenders all looking around, trying to blame somebody else, but Ruwald, he was there for an eternity. So much space left for him to move into, too. Grimer, Doldy, Kirkby all just zoned back. Left it there for Ruwald. Lining up for his second goal of the day. And this to open the margin to 36 points. Kicks on its way. And the Tigers are going to half time with a very handy lead. Well, Ruwald's a real jack in the box. He's a spark up forward. Shown there that he's smart enough to find some space when he has to. We nearly saw a mark of the year previously. He just couldn't hold on to that. He'd be pretty disappointed. He had the ball outside 50 earlier in the quarter. Tried to bounce the ball into the man on the mark. So you can see he's got a bit of spark about him. And as a small forward, that's what you want. And as a small forward, you need to be able to kick like he has at least two goals a game. 11 scoring shots to one in this quarter. Sturt's last preliminary final was a 55-point loss in 2004 to the Eagles, and it's heading that way this afternoon. I'm really liking the ability of Glenelg players to be able to take on the tackler, take the tackle, then release the ball to their teammates. Allen and Cubillo, with that rugby league background that he had, would have been proud of that. Getting close to the spear tackle. Tony Day throws it up. Cubillo got to the front. Got it forward. Evans looked like he was taken down. The ball was taken away by Hinge in front of Backwell. Got a good shepherd. Inboard he went with a hand pass. Was dangerous. Went to the big man Kirk. Couple around him from the double blues. Mules did well. It eventually got to Allen from block. Mules kick, or rather Allen's kick wasn't the greatest. Fittick knocked it away. Holmes ran onto it. 42 the margin. The Bays lead by, and it is on behind play. Something went on involving, I think it might have been Doldig. And they will go to the rooms. The Bays very much in command of this match. And you detect that the double blues are a little angry about it. There's no doubt they should be. They've been disappointing in that second quarter. Their first quarter wasn't great, but it was better than their second quarter. Glenelg have just outworked them, outmuscled them and outplayed them. We can see they've got some clever players around the forward line. Doldick did a beautiful little tap on there. And Thomas Holmes didn't let him down. 42 the margin at half time. The Bays are in control.
Tomorrow night on ABC One, at 8 o'clock on Australian Story, it took them 20 years to get together, and just one night to tear them apart forever. The remarkable love story behind the headlines. He was the happiest he'd ever been in his life. And at 8.30 on Four Corners, the inspiring story of three African women whose lives have been transformed by the work of an Australian doctor. That's tomorrow on ABC One. ABC brings you the next phase of television broadcasting. It's the new way to watch your favourite TV programs. Whenever, wherever. Introducing ABC iView. A free online streaming video service which provides full screen high resolution video at a quality above that found on most international television content sites. ABC iView allows you to catch up with a selection of recently aired ABC shows, archived ABC programming and premiere content not seen on the ABC before. Programs on ABC iView will update regularly. All you need is a fast internet connection such as ADSL2 and access to an internet browser with the latest Flash plugin. ABC iView has its own inbuilt video player. You can pause, rewind or send them to a friend. And it's designed so you can watch it on your PC or your TV. All you have to do is go to abc.net.au slash iview. It will revolutionise the way you watch entertainment. ABC iView. TV out of the box. On Friday morning, the US vice presidential debate. Sarah Palin, McCain's running mate, faces off with Obama's running mate, Joe Biden. Don't miss their only debate. This is their biggest challenge, and it's direct from St. Louis. The US presidential debate, Friday morning, 11 o'clock on ABC One. Are you a happy person? Thursday, Catalyst asks, what is happiness? Better health, a lot of money. I know, a new pair of shoes cheers me up. And how can we be happier? This is just one way researchers can find out what's going on up here when I'm happy. Our mind can be our best friend and our worst enemy. Plus, in time for summer, the mathematics of body surfing. Have you ever wondered why some people manage to catch them easily and others can't? That's Catalyst, Thursday on ABC One. If you've lost a treasure... We're trying to help Yasmin find a sister she's never met. If you're lost for words... You could be in a state of flabbergastation. <laughs> or if you just need to know... Don't believe that motivational rubbish. You use all of your brain. Can we help? 6.30 Friday, ABC One. Bays by 42 points at half time and surely Rob, the rise of the Bays this season, one of your highlights. There's no doubt that they've risen to the occasion today. They are, they are playing very good football and their tackling has been a highlight which is giving them the opportunities to score goals and they've had 20 scoring shots to eight. It's incredible, isn't it? They've had a great season. They finished on top of the ladder. We're going to have a look at how 2008 unfolded. Here's what our cameras saw. Why not? He can kick it on Fortnite. Elevated kick, Laddams with a right boot! Nicely rode by Archer, then he got back to Stripling, turned the ball across his body and did it perfectly! Laddams, Mercurial, off the boot, swings back! And he loves it! Schwarz, stay ball, push in the back, no free, Schwarz, go number eight, yes! On the lead comes Hargraves, two flew for South Adelaide and at the base of the pack and will kick a goal, well done by Rugolo! With a bounce and plenty of pace, breaks the lines, kicks inside 50 and it's Hargraves! It's two on one, Port Adelaide up numbers, Warren did the pushing, Hunter came through, kicked it off the ground, stumbled, fumbled! It's Burdett turns wide, he can take his time and line this up in bed and can he make the most of it? He does! Otten on the left boot. I think he's kicked it. And they've got the clock to run oh. down. Oh, missed by Ryan. And now Harry Miller. Oh, oh, lovely oh. mark. After the siren for Port Adelaide, he lines from 55. It's a weight on the right and won't make it. And South Adelaide wins. High kick. Hard
Hargraves went to ground. Gogol with him. Quick snap. Little John's got his first goal in league footy. Oh, a little bit too quick for Salter. Oh, play a hell without the footy. It'll be a Port Adelaide free. Hot pass in advantage. And Daniel Hargraves thinks, oh, oh, I love that rule. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a day out. 10-2. <laughs> and he's got it all going on today. He's pretty happy. Away goes Bentley. Bentley kicks long. It's a good kick. It could be their first. It is. Oh, brilliant tap over the back to Lucas. Sets up Crane, who says, thank you. I'll have a goal. Backman has got to get through a couple. He's got to screw it around his body. It's curling. It's curling. It's curled around and up. Crane looks for Perry. Perry in front takes the mark. Quick hand. Gets it to Pierce, who started on the interchange bench. That is a lovely kick to Chambers. O'Sullivan. He's slick. He'll line it up on his left. And goes bang. Oh, oh. then let himself down with the kick. West off. Thrown off the kick, but he got it away for a goal. And long he goes to the hot spot, if you like. And Hattelberg says, I like. Long ball burst up to the 10 metre square. Hassan gets the first for West. Back to Hassan from 40 metres, has a ping, he's got it. McAtee follows up off the outside of the boot, if you don't mind. Lovely little slip catch by Treby, and then the circus trick to kick the goal. Here's Damon White. Does the discipline thing. Kicks to the square. And away. Here's White. Trapped it, released it. Walker on the snap. Goal. Sizes it up and peels the kick off to Kane. This will be a good start to the Bays. It goes. It goes long and straight. Here's an opportunity. Oh, wonderful kick. That's a goal. Needs to kick straight here. Wobbly old ball. Uni. Can he get it to his boot? He spins around and kicks a miraculous goal. He's at 50. Oh, he decides to go inside. He gave it to block. Inside to Dolby. Can steady. The snap. Oh, the vision was excellent. Rewind will kick it. And the will win. What can he do? He's normally clever. Over the top. Kirkby. Fisher. He was hot. Block. From nowhere. McConnell. Kicks. So Perry waits and waits and then tries to go over the top and Chambers has got the advantage and he'll take it. McGlone has Wicks over the top. Also Sharples. Now he needs a shepherd here. Go for goal, Charlie. He wobbles, he turns, he twists, he straightens, he goes. Biachi back to Simmons. Simmons hoists it high. Passador's there, Alloway. Couldn't take the mark. Here's the nippy Fitzgerald around the body. Stewart. Drops the ball up for Passador's sticky good. fingers. Salter, normally clever, finds some space. Gee's a good player. Looks for Passador again, and he's got it. White came out. Simmons did well. Was aware he had Fitzgerald beside him. Fitzgerald is wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, here comes Modlop. Now Modlop's in the pocket with plenty of pace. He's got Thompson. He doesn't want to use him. He curls it around. <laughs> Why? Handball. Kick was beautiful to Fitzgerald. Looks up, waits, and pass it all goes, and he's got him. He's got him. Eagles will go into attack again through Stewart. Pass it all made the call at the back and will come over the top. It comes out the back. Uni sets it high. McIntyre's at the front. Hitchell. Here's Thompson kicking it off the ground. Now McIntyre slipped the hand pass. Uni will kick it. Uni will kick it. And North Adelaide will fifth. win. He tried to get around two, did it well. Gallagher hasn't kicked a goal this year, he has now. He's a left footer, draws his man. Jackman running from half back. Oh, he loved this, he loved it off the boot. Salter gives off. Treby needs to goal, and he does. Oh, great work. Toed forward by Hamlin. Hamlin off the left foot. Oh, nice finish. Gave it off to the assigned kicker. Bang. Here he goes, bang, Cupido. Love There's the difference. Direction. It's a goal. Alan found Krieg. Krieg's got right. Wright's got Alloway in the pocket and finds him. Handball over the top. Block. Had a player hovering in the back. Well, gave it to Fisher. Then Fisher kicks it really high. Grimer can't get a run at it. And he does get it though. Here comes the hardest rock. Allen. And then got it to Murphy. Who won the footy. And Murphy delivers the seller. Dutchke. He was tackled. Thomas, the skipper. Kicks it high. Havelberg's got a run at it. And that's a strong pair of hands of Dinosaur. Havelberg almost. No, can't oh. it in. Play on. It comes back to O'Sullivan from 40 metres. They're even closer. 
Rashidi caught and robbed of the ball by Backwell, who tried to give it to Kane, and Hinge was there as well, who's a long kick. Sets it up beautifully. McGlone got in space. Now he has a shot for goal, and he go for the man in Cone. Cone might kick a goal! Pushed, but still got away. Farmer goes long. That was only a chip shot. Chambers! Doldy did very well. Kane thought that the play should kick a goal, and he does. Hinge wants to go with his right boot and finds McConnell. Now it comes for Dolby. Back to Backwell. Backwell, the McGarry medalist, the Mercurial Backwell. He kicks a goal. And away goes Surgeon. Just gathers his bounce from 48. Lines it up. It's close. It won't get the Surgeon can have a run, Geddes has got pace, Summerton's in space, oh he could go all the way here, Stephen Summerton, he wobbles, he bounces, Kick he bounces goal. again, he steadies, he sets it up, he kicks, he goes! He did run forward and stretch was good too, then the give to Clyde, now he's in goal kicking style here at the moment, Clyde draws it back at the break. And to a one-on-one, -on -one as Surgeon runs down, no one with him, he kicked it behind a moment ago, to Elstone. This for the sealer. There's the yeah, icing. That's it. Port Adelaide will win their third game in a row. Got it for Stark who kicked it high. Oh, that's a good mark. Walker just pinched it. Digan. Skipper's in space. Gallagher off a step. He is in good form today. Walker surrounded by three. Got around two. Got around three. And then he went to row. And row off the left foot. And he goes for the banana. Over the footy, Allen just sits it up. Who can take a mark? Ryswick! Really stamping his authority in this North Adelaide side to go! Oh, O'Brien with a fumble. He might just burn them off. He ends up going the long ball. Up they go. Stewart, snap, Creek. Is it there? Oh, yeah! White's got to get it back. Short kick to Miller. And that'll be 25. Here it comes. Curling back. Curling back. And curling back for a wonderful goal. Sibanella is short and it hangs. Oh. The hang time. Well, it hung too long. And Ian Perry's that full half up. Thank you. Gum, a bounce. He may just go check side here. Trips and gum. He goes left foot. Oh, he goes so well. There's Elijah Ware leading the chase. Well done. Shot free. How's he going to go with a shot at goal? Perfect. In goes Thompson again. How did he get rid of that? I don't know. Herring, looping handball to Crane. Oh, brilliant handball, Herring. Cap it off, Luke. It comes around. He does. Now O'Hara forward of the play. O'Sullivan, open space in front of him. Can go over the top and does. Callanan should finish the job. No. Content to handball it to Griffin. It goes to Nelson. He's a booming kick. He looks for Chambers. He tripped. But he marks. And finds Whiteman. Whiteman gives it across to his teammate. He kicks it long. It might be a goal. Yes! Goes back for O'Hara. Sibanaela is spare. Oh, oh mistake. Goal coming up. Brilliant work by the greatest goal kicker that Stuart has seen in many a year. It's the leg. So Perry will go to the goal square. They set themselves. Oh, Jimmy Turner can't take it. He's gone off the ground. No, that's great recovery. Pack forms. Turner with the crumb. His captain was there. His vision was excellent. Smith's got a goal. Has he? Well, Dylan Williams follows up for it. Handball over to Rolf to Hanby. He's got Carroll. Carroll can run to 50 and have a shot. Kicks to the goal square. Parry will set himself. Can he take the mark? He has. It's just a question of margin. Set up that late win for the second time under Clay Sampson. Went to Riley. Now deep inside forward 50. Chambers. Where's Jericho? Uses him. Jericho tumbles That's on the left footer. That's a lovely kick by Jericho. Rowe had the better of that. Donahue roved it beautifully. Here it goes. This is Thompson. He's got a screw it around the corner and did it pretty well, Thompson. That was Silverlock. Goes to Martin. Martin hasn't missed this year. He hasn't missed another one. It's long and inaccurately. They bring it down to the front. Oh, over the head if you don't mind. Oh, he slips the tackle beautifully. How's that snap? Oh, that's magnificent work. McConnell dropped what he should have taken. It was too easy for him. It was too straightforward. Much better to play on, go onto your left foot, snap it into the middle and set up hinge. Unleashes from 60 metres out. Gilhouse trying for the fend off. Good mark taken. Going on to the
Cleveland right side there, Treby. Passes back to Colville. Long, penetrating kick into the 50. Punched away. Crump down for Clunn. Goes up from the McKenzie area. McKenzie, good mark at the back. Puts the skates on straight away. Handballs over the top. Nice kick into the open. Goal! That's home there for the Eagle. Plenty of numbers back here for the Bay. Almost played beautifully. Such shot there from Treby. Kicks it up and towards the attacking area. Simmons picks the pocket. Has a shot. There's your goal. Nobody's coming at him. Can go all the way to goal. McKenzie chooses the pass and he missed Simmons. He was good enough to get it though, wasn't he? Out comes Powell. Salter out by himself. They didn't go to him. Now he can straighten and kick a goal. Oh, wonderful finish. It's up towards the attacking zone. Oh, great mark by oh. Woodhouse. They're good. He's signalling for the forwards to move to him and they all oblige. Goes over the back. It's going to end up with Jeremy Clayton. He'll stop this. And he does. Summit dodging, weaving. Off to Perkins. Perkins lines it up. And slams it home for number three. Lots of great action from the SA NFL this season. Rob, quickly. North Adelaide and the Eagles out of the five and Port and Norwood in. Is it as simple as that for the season? <laughs> Pretty much. I think if you have a quick look at each of the clubs, West really didn't make any inroads. Got to assess them in 12 months. You know, South Adelaide have had four coaches, four footy managers in 12 months. Really no direction and in disarray. North were disappointing. If you have a look at it, I think the Eagles are going through a rebuilding stage, so they'll get better. They're a good club. Norwood improved. Port, interesting position, played finals but went out pretty quickly. Centrals are in the grand final and <laughs> yeah. obviously we're looking at Sturt and Glenelg who have been very consistent all year. Centrals in a grand final, what a shock, nine in a row for them. Let's go down to Sodas and injuries for the Bays at halftime, Sodas? Yeah, well look on the scoreboard, they're flying at the moment, aren't they? Doing very, very nicely but injury, we saw Angus Lally in a bit of trouble in that second term. Seemed to hurt his knee, if you have a look at the incident, a pretty innocuous sort of incident there, just the knee buckled under his body weight. Now the fear from the club down the medical staff at half time is that it could be an ACL, an anterior cruciate ligament, which would be uh, terrible, terrible news for the young man because that generally means it's uh, a knee reconstruction. So fingers crossed it's not that bad, but just the word at the moment out of the change rooms from the medical staff is that Angus Lally may have damaged his ACL. Now, uh, as we mentioned, Glenelg are flying. Todd Grimer got off to a magnificent start. Pat Fiddock was used in defence. He was good at half forward last week for the Double Blues. He went into, into defence today to try and mind Grimer. Grimer had a great start, kicked two goals. Code, Michael Code was moved from half forward for Sturt back down onto Grimer to try and close him down. But when Grimer was uh, a little quieter, Doldig then stood up and Kirkby stood up as well in the second term. So Glenelg have a, a great number of options in this first half. Doldig, Grimer uh, and also Kirkby there in the forward line. That's certainly given them the ascendancy and it is a long way back from the Blues, 42 points. Absolutely be some sort of record would be some sort of result if they could get back from here Grimer with two Rue Walton Kirkby and only singles for the double blues and among them not Brant Chambers strangely enough the leading goal kicker all year just can't register a goal at this point in time if we have a quick look at the stats have a look at the inside 50s there Glenelg 29 Compared to Sturt, 16. Centre breaks, 8 to 4 in favour of Glenelg. They've had a lot of scoring shots. Glenelg, 20 compared to Sturt's 8, and they're dominating around the stoppages. They're dominating in terms of possessions. Just quickly, Brad Chambers has not been held goalless in 2008. He had one goal against the Bays in that match in round 13. Rick McGowan, Kenny Engineer, something for Chambers and Perry, and Engineer a win. Well, I think it's more about getting into Brent's head and talking to him and saying, right, we need a better effort from you, obviously, in the second half. We need you to be composed. We need you to get moving. At the moment, he's just very stagnant. He's trying to wrestle Rudolph, and that works in Rudolph's favour because he's quick on his toes, steps around him and gets in front of him. Brent Chambers is at his best when he leads, and I'm sure that's all that Rick McGowan has said to him at half time. Well, I guess the thing is that leading sets up the ability then to take advantage of your body and well, he is a bigger body than Ruwell. Well he is and it also gives the opportunity or gives an opportunity for your midfielders who have got the ball to know where to go with the ball. If you're leading in the direction of where you want the ball delivered you really control the game. Other side of things the Bays 
Well, keep on keeping on. That's what we've seen from them all season. Well, look, they're just a very even team. Their, their clearance work we've spoke about, it is sensational today. Their tackling is hard. It's been a real feature of their game. You can see guys there like Brett Wack, Backwell mastering the troops. Cranston has been instrumental in giving first use of the ball around the stoppages. And you know what? It's, it's having an effect on the scoreboard. Cranston having a career season. A guy like Lucas Block, he was best in Ferriston in the reserves last season. He stepped up this season. Ty Allen, we know, has had a fantastic season as well. It's all happening for the Bays this afternoon. Let's see how the second half unfolds. Here's Chris Kendall. Bonnell, the king of preliminary finals in the SNFL, a 71% winning record when they make it to that match, 12 and 5, looks set to blow that out today, double blues, need to get a spark around centre, they need more from Chambers of course, Perry's been pushing a fair way up the ground, maybe netting closer to goal, Tristan Gums deep in the forward 50 for them along with Simon Feast, start this third term. DeLuca and Cranston. That's been an intriguing battle today. DeLuca making a statement gets a big knockout. Straight to Glenelg, however. It's going to be a free kick here to the Tigers. Taken high. Ty Allen. Right. Lucas Block. Sturt dropping plenty of numbers further back. Oh, great mark taken by Kirkby. He's had a real influence today. Pushing up the ground, taking plenty of the contested mark. Looking for Doldig. Strong mark taken at the back. On the uh, code. Passes off to Sheedy. Out to Wicks. Crane, Sheedy and Wicks combined for only four disposals in that third term. They need plenty more out of the engine room. Going back into attack again now for Glenelg. McClay holding at the back, takes, takes the mark. Just spoke then, Chris, about the engine room. If you're a Sturt supporter, I reckon you'd be disappointed if there isn't a fight back in this second half, particularly amongst the midfielders. Certainly need to make a statement. Nelson just kicked it straight into a Glenelg opponent. Now it's with Kane. Allen is wrapped up on Nelson. Could have been a half Nelson, really. Sheedy. Now they're trying to bring it off of half-back. Going into the centre, Evans. Hasn't been very busy today. Crane, we just touched on him. Needs to lift in this third term. Backwell. Well, fumbled what he could have taken cleanly. We're going to have a ball up. Bayes just getting more numbers around the ball. Just working harder at the moment. To Luca and Cranston who worried about getting the ball down to Backwell nicely. Brilliant hand pass to Kane forward of the play. They won't catch him and nobody's coming to him. He can run in and kick a goal. And he's met late as well. And it did not affect the kick. And the Bays look like they are going to sail into a grand final. Well, Ben Kane, ex-Box Hill, ex-Hawthorne player. We know he's got speed. We know he's got talent in the kicking area. You see both of them here. He's a linkage player. Great work in the centre of the ground by Brett Backwell. Just walked through Sturt midfielders who really haven't given a yelp, which set up Ben Kane, gave him an opportunity to run the length of the ground. You can see a blood roll, Fabian DeLuca, being spotted by the umpire, will be coming off the ground. Rob, just as DeLuca uh, is ready to come off, Feast had started at full forward. He's going to move into the ruck here. And Sturt had also swung things around. Michael Code is standing on the wing on this side. He's opposed to Backwell. Farmer coming on for DeLuca. He's going to push deep into attack to replace Feast. Certainly an interesting match up there. So as you just made mention, Brett Backwell and Code playing on the wing. Code usually plays in a key position at centre half forward or centre half back. Well, he is versatile. Well, Pies, actually, uh, Ben Kane started on the wing on this side on Code. He's kicked that goal. He switched sides onto the far side, picking up uh, Wicks. And um, Backwell has come out onto Code here to perhaps expose a bit of pace, in fact. Good thing Code's not on Bode. That'll make for an interesting tongue twister. Sheedy just works himself into trouble. Cabillo clears it up. All hinge. Got Backwell moving for him, and 25. He still have conceded a few of those today. Rick McGowan would not be impressed. He has a 1-5 record against Mark Micken. 
Mickens seems to have his measure at this stage. Looks set to extend. Double blues. Can still find something. Back well. Going deep into attack. Double blues back here. In ball over the top. It sits for block. Has a snap. It's going to land at the top of the square. Cabillo looking to bundle it over the boundary line. Rush behind for Glenelg. See the discipline of Glenelg. Block not wanting to take the shot, but centre the ball. Give his smaller forwards and taller forwards an opportunity. Put the ball in the centre of the corridor, go, the hot spot. That's it, Matt. Let's go, Josh. That margin, 49 points. Fisher was good to Murphy. Pinozzo in a bit of trouble. Good presence of mind to get it out the back to Murphy. Cop to Shepard and then went into half forward. Code came the other way. Grimer was too strong. Off the boat. Backwell is lurking, but he goes to hinge and then block. Takes his time, pops it over the top. Kirkby opposed to Nelson would have too much pace and height. No free kick. No nothing, said the umpire. And then Code handballs down the line. It's still in. Hinge. If he kicks this, forget it. The Bays will win for sure. He doesn't quite get it around far enough. Minor score for John Hinge. Rick McGowan, not looking too happy as you would expect. His side 50 points down. Looking at the board, what changes can he make? May well need to look at moving some of his defenders, such as the fella like McGlone, who's kicking the ball in into the midfield to try to give him some spark. Maybe Ben Nelson's another player he can throw in the midfield. They just need something. I almost wonder if it's worth throwing Luke Crane to a halfback flank just to give him some run from there because he's been very quiet. Thompson, McGlone. He's had his moments, McGlone, apart from that one. That's going to be a push. So he does get the chance to redeem himself. He's lucky then, very lucky to get the free kick. Glenel Blake just couldn't roll him in the end. You can see there, just fell into his back slightly, rolled him at the end, but needed to gain momentum from himself and pull McGlone to the side earlier. Cranston, and good in the air, unusual sort of kick, presents it to Whiteman, to McClay, it's in a half back, this is where they break down from this point, he's got Cabello in his outside, he's still making the lead, ends up with Sheedy, Sheedy, preferring to keep it on the outer side, Wicks, Crane over the top, also Farmer, goes to the latter, over his head. Fisher, fends off. Gets the run through Kane. Murphy. Now it's with Kane. Oh, they're looking very good at the moment. They're looking irresistible, the Tigers. Good handball off. It's going to be a free to Glenelg off the ball. They got it back well. Oh, that's a creative one. Hinge. Goes long, bit of a scrubby. Over the top, it's going to beat almost everyone. Nelson keeps his composure. Just fumbles, bowed. Paddles it in front of him. Block, beats him over the boundary line, we're going to have a throw in. Clever play by Boat. Just to read the handball going from the Sturt play. Got his hand in there. Keep the ball in the area. Mark Micken, pointing, directing. Not happy, even though his side is well ahead. Fisher to Bode, wanted it on the boot quickly. Fisher was held and taken down and the umpire let it go. Now Allen had time to get back to his feet and dish a hand pass for Backwell. Looks centre field, hand up from Doldig. Doldig's got the measure, no he hasn't. Double Blues will break now from defence. McClay to Farmer in a lot of space and the ball bounces away from him. He's got too much pace you think for Sherwood. The veteran stays at it. Sherwood runs past in the end and Farmer can square it up. And coming in, Gum with the fumble. And then he lost the ball and the Bays will keep them out. Well, it was all set up for the double blues and they just couldn't get a goal. And Mark Micken must be very happy with his working class team. The step plays need to hit more targets. Very evident there. They had a free play Gum in the centre of the corridor, just couldn't hit the target. I think it gauge across the season that they do have the ability to bring back this margin, but they just aren't playing well enough. There's no doubt about that. 
Yeah, I think that Sturr are a very talented outfit. They can score quickly. They do score heavily usually, not seeing it today, and they can't find a spark anywhere. Evans gets it to Sheedy. Sits for Perry. Goes over by hand to Wicks. Into space. Lovely pass. Feast. Handball's off. Code. Has a shot. That splits the centre. And that's just the sort of spark you would have been looking for from Michael Code. He kept making space, Robert, and he was on it. Well, as Sade has said early in the game, he can play back, he can play forward. He's showing he also has an engine to be able to play in the midfield, playing on the wing. His non-preferred foot struck it well, found some space. Sturt certainly needed that, and that's an understatement. My well, margin's still 44. Is there a pulse for Sturt? DeLuca takes it out of the ruck. Didn't dispose of it correctly. Umpire let it go. We'll get a secondary ball up. DeLuca again and over the top came Code. Then Painter released it for Wicks. Look at the Tigers around the ball though. Painter again and Evans. And Whiteman. And then Sheedy. And Gum almost pulled it in one hand. Mules went to the boundary line. Umpire said it wasn't deliberate. Had full intention of getting the ball across the line then, Crossy. <laughs> the ball be hurled in. The spectators shade their eyes from the sun. Bode quickly onto the boot. Whiteman, the only man there, takes it. Plays on. This is what they have to do, the double blues. Throw caution to the wind and Perry gets on the end of it almost. Hinge. He was good to Murphy. This side of the ground back was free. If he can gather it, he's away. He'll get some protection from Pinozzo. Backwell with a couple of bounces. Chasing hard was Chambers. Backwell gets it down the ground with an awful kick in the end. He'd run too far, I think. He was a little tired. Kicked it directly to his opponent. DeLuca, Kubelo, DeLuca again. Back to Wicks. The last five minutes have been encouraging for Sturt. Getting their hands on it. And they're starting to hit targets. Crane. Gum hits him. Looking to go off. Perry's instructing him to have a shot himself. Worth noting too, Chris, the breeze has picked up since the halftime break. It was probably worth a goal or so in the first term. Sturt have it now. Picked up a little bit, so good for them for the moment. But uh, if Clonell can keep a four or five goal buffer at least at three-quarter time, it will be very, very hard for Sturt against it. 23 goals, 11 for Tristan Gum this year. Averages 19 disposals. Picks on its way. Oh, he's a sharp shooter, isn't he? 24-11. That brings the margin back to 38 points. They've got a sniff again, Rob. They have. Finding a bit of space. The game's starting to open up. They need guys like Crane to be able to deliver the ball more into the forward lines. And if you can pinpoint passes like that, you'll give your forwards every opportunity. Beautiful kick by Gum. As Soda said, the wind has picked up. That gave him the confidence to go back. He knew with the wind just picking up slightly that he'd make the distance. Centre clearance is becoming important. Double blues get them. Evans with the toe poke. Fisher taken down. Play on call the umpire block. Cabillo attacked him but he got it away to Allen. Allen went down the line for Doldig. Ball covered him over the top. Grimer was good. Doldig and then Grimer can go again. Doldig with the dummy was pretty good. And he hits Kirkby on the leader. Excellent work in confined spaces from Matthew Doldig. And Rory Kirkby doesn't miss very often. Beautiful work by Doldig. Summarised the situation, had it right, found Kirkby. Kirkby hooks it badly, might have missed everything he has. And what was your last comment, Neil? Wonderful setup, wasn't it? <laughs> so Sturt come the other way. The Bays, for the first time this afternoon, pretty much, are under some severe pressure. Code at the front was brave. Wanted to play on. Umpire said no, he had nobody on the mark. Code goes in front of Chambers. He's got support from McGloan, who's run from half-back. Should get there. McGloan got an awkward bounce, but still gathered it. In space, Thompson can play on. And he has to now because the umpire's called him to play on. He sets it up for Perry and it's not through for the minor score. Well, Thompson took one step and the umpire said, that's enough, play on. I think the umpire was right. 
Thompson had moved off the mark. It's interesting to see if Mark Mickett will continue to run the gauntlet. Backwell's playing on the wing opposed to Code. Code's getting a lot of the ball kick, one goal. But conversely, Brett Backwell has been fantastic this quarter. Rob, we know Angus Lally's afternoon is over with that suspected ACL injury. Bad news for the Bays. Ty Allen has just come off the ground too. Lots of problems here with his right shoulder. Looks to pop it out. The medical staff are just working hard to try and get it back into place. They've removed the tape that was already on there before the game. It looks like they'll try and retape it. That could be a critical one. He's so good at the stoppages, Allen. Little 50-50 thing starting to fall set. Sturt's way. Crane. Just smothered. Evans. DeLuca. Gets his kick away just in time. Goes over the top of Farmer. Ridden into the turf there was Murphy. Rudolph. Goes by hand. Oh, that has to be holding the ball. Or it's a try. One of the two. Incorrect disposal. Sturt play down behind play. It was Chambers. He's up again. Looking for Feast. Can't take it. Cranston. Out the back to Backwell. Takes a bounce. Takes a second bounce. I know we don't take stats for running bounces, but I reckon he'd be leading today. That's Bobby holding the ball. And it is. And the double players are starting to now a serious challenge. 37 points. They need to penetrate on the scoreboard for all this good work of the first 10 minutes. Well, the, Glenelg, the Glenelg players are not wanting to kick the ball due to the fact that Sturt wingers, in particular a guy like Cove, is sitting in the back place. So every time they look up, he's there by himself. Long kick. DeLuca reached up. Umpire saw a push. Relief for the Bays. Rudolph will take the kick. Willoughby is... That's centre-half back by himself. He decided, probably sensibly, you'd think at this stage of the match to go short, and the veteran captain, the young veteran, Mules, with the mark. Third about all the play this quarter, just not capitalising on the scoreboard. If they can get within four goals at three-quarter time, you'd give them half a chance. Ball over the back block. Took it well down to half forward. He went Kirkby. The Kirkby Nelson matchup is certainly working in favour of the Tigers. Inside 50, Dolding opposed to McClay, came over the top well, bowed at the front, couldn't gather it the first time, and the hard nut in Cabillo came in, knocked it away. McClay's kick was pretty good. Somehow he found Crane. The double blues have lifted, and they've got some run and legs. Down the outer side they go. Towards half forward, Perry. He let it get over the back, hinge covered well. Perry tackled him, but he got it away. Mules, and again to Sherwood, and Sherwood's kick missed the target. Starting to happen for the double blues. The Bay is all of a sudden starting to miss targets. It's starting to happen for Jay Chidi. He just had two kicks and six handballs in the first quarter, but he had seven and two in this quarter already. Feast, Cranston, old leaf player ridden to the turf, possibly. Thompson, Wicks. Out to Sheedy again, that's number nine. He goes over the top to Feast. Working his way into trouble there, possibly. Gum, further up, Farmer. It's going to go over his head, Rudolph again. Just gets the handball away in time. Got some run now, the Tigers. They just need to settle. Oh, that's a bad one. Cue below. He's got him queuing up for it. It had to hit a target. Evans has a snap. Kicks on its way. Just short saving Mark taken at the back well Mark Mickham would be extremely disappointed with Matthew Bode there's no need to try to move that ball so quickly golden rule take possession first before you try to dispose of it Bode is an experienced player should have known better I reckon he's probably just redeemed himself there he's got to spot the target up and he does hinge X crows teammate to X crows teammate Sturter dropping plenty of numbers across the centre, so he's going to have to kick over that. Sturt player flew a little bit early. We're going to have a throw in. He fit it, known for his leap. He came down with a reputation of being almost high jumper status, and that time just sat himself at the front and had the reach and the leap to get up there and knock it over the boundary line. Feast now opposed to Cranston, who got it down. The clearance master was Thompson. He just couldn't get a clean hand pass. Murphy's in trouble. 70 from goal. 
for the base. If you notice the Glenelg midfielders will take the tackle and they're not afraid to go down and the umpire ball it up again. They'll only release the ball if they know they can give it to a teammate. They don't let the ball bubble out. Block this time, taking the tackle. Lucas Block, busiest player on the ground. 21 possessions along with Brett Backman. Kane has come across off the ball now to meet Code. He's on centre wing now. Kane on Code. Crane was brilliant. Down the half forward he goes. Over the back, a great mark taken by Fisher. He'll want to settle things. Takes his time getting up. Out the back, he's got Hinge. He opted against that. They're just trying to slow down the play to base. Good kick for Murphy. At the front came McDonald. He took Murphy down. That was important because he had support from Rudolph and they could have been away the base. Now Murphy. Again, the experienced heads for the base, just slowing things down. Grimer, strong mark. Okay, okay. So right Grimer in. now, 70 from goal, Three. where we were just maybe 30 or 40 seconds ago, taking his time. Blues flood back. Grimer goes short. Murphy right with on. the mark 60 from goal. Around the arc they go. Back in centre field. Inside the square is Rudolph. He opts not to go for that. Instead drops it in short. Doldig met it. Now he's got four and double blues. Colours around him and he's over the ball. And the umpire says we'll have a ball up. Blues need to work it out of this stoppage. Rob mentioned plenty of the play, just not penetrating on the scoreboard. Whiteman tries to burst his way through. Slips out the side. <whistles> Further afield, Kane unloads from 50 metres out. And he slipped at home. And they get some breathing space again to open it out to 43 points. Well, that's been Kane's second goal for this quarter. And another goal as a result of some stoppage work inside the Ford 50 for Glenelg. They've done it all day. Sturt have been disappointing in that area. Brett Backwell was the man handing the ball. Gave the hand pass to Ben Kane. Kane had Fisher on the inside, ignored him. Backed himself in. He's a beautiful kick and he's kicked his third goal for today. Kane kicked his first goal of the term of the two-minute mark. Quite a drought for the base, but they're now... With that goal, just get a bit of breathing space. Again, Crane out of the middle. Labouring down there was Code, but the ball came for him in the end. Can't push off the tackle of Sherwood, and the umpire will come in and separate them. Deluca has improved. Tried to follow up. Rudolph did all right. Now we get another ball up. DeLuke is playing in the, in the ruck in the forward line, which is leaving Feast to play in the back play. So when Glenelg look up, they'll be fronting Feast by himself on the wing. Hinge was good to Willoughby. Good to Kane. And then Murphy. Murphy down the line for Feast, the man that was just mentioned. Picked it off easily. Support from Wicks. Hasn't used it yet. Pass was awful. Fisher came in. And 25, is it? No. Whiteman went high on him as Fisher took the mark. Now, experience of Adam Fisher. He just says, let's take our time here. And he drops it in short. More effective than what Feast's kick was. Ruwal. Out wide he goes for Grimer. Grimer takes his time. Inboard to Willoughby, no. Umpire calls play on. Tries to chip it over the top. You wonder if that's 15. Umpire says it was. You wonder if that's a mark. Then Kane will take it. Kane says, come this way, and goes to Cranston midfield. Outside him, he's got a couple. He's forced back this side. Fisher. There are no Sturt players. Defensive side of centre wing. Fisher for Grimer. And Grimer pulls off a couple of touches and then the mark and can go to the lead-up player. And he's got it. And it's Kirk. And he hasn't had many kicks this afternoon and he plays on. And you wonder about that. And then he misses everything. Perhaps he was going for Dolding. Dolding.
Probably going to have to chase it down 40 metres from goal. He won't get there. It's out of bounds. What was Daniel Kirk thinking? Well, I think that's what you classically call a brain explosion. No need for that. Glenelg at the moment, just beautiful mark by Grimer. Glenelg just need to settle things down, have another scoring shot. Daniel Kirk decided that he was a rover, not a ruckman. Got his ambitions and capabilities mixed up. Perhaps he got mixed up between being a rover and a rower for a couple of minutes there. Extremely ambitious, big fella. Ridden into the ground, Crane. Drew Wild wrapped up, another stoppage. But he'll just dropping loose players across half back. So if they do win the ball out, there's going to be a sea of tigers there to cut it off. Coming out with the snap. That goal. And that takes it for the Tigers. Josh Willoughby gets his first. 49-point lead. Gee, Piles, it's going to be hard from here for Sturt. Oh, no doubt. We spoke about it all day. I just can't believe... Well, I can't believe how good Glenelg have been and how poor Sturt have been in terms of the stoppages inside their forward 50. We've mentioned it several times. And Glenelg have kicked, from my memory, at least four goals from stoppages, maybe more inside their forward 50. They find a way to get somebody on the move every time. Well, you look back in hindsight now and you say Thompson, or rather Gum, kicked a goal at the 11-minute mark to bring it back to 38 points, but then... Glenelg put the clamps on and have just been able to hold up the double blues and even more importantly kick a couple of goals in time on and they have a 49 point advantage in the preliminary final and Grimer who's been so good for them takes another mark there, there, there. Grimer Go. looks up and goes for Kirkby opposed to Nelson out it goes over the line at the back and that Kirkby Nelson matchup has worked for them, the Bays, in this quarter. It's just too athletic, Kirkby, for Nelson at this stage of his career. Ben Nelson has been a trooper for the Sturt Football Club, but it's just too big and athletic. Well, there's a play on advantage. You wonder why Richard Williams blew that whistle at all then. But anyway, Gum over the top to Wicks, who hasn't stopped running. He hasn't had a lot of support. He goes for Perry. Perry opposed to oh. Mules, who came over the top and took it away from the big guy. Mules went short, Sherwood, and then on the siren, Kane was about to take the kick. But at three-quarter time, the Bays have a big lead, and Glenelg 13-12-90, look like they're marching on to a grand final appearance, Sturt 6-5, 41, a 49-point lead at three-quarter time, and Rob, You'd have to say honours even at the end of that quarter after the double blues had made the running in the early stages of the third term. They did. They had plenty of ball. They worked very hard. Their midfield did pick up Sturt in that third quarter, but unfortunately they didn't register it on the scoreboard. You can see this guy here was instrumental in the third quarter, Ben Kane. That was his first goal. He kicked two in that quarter. Sturt lifted their intensity and their momentum, and it was their midfield as such as Sheedy and Wicks getting the ball. Cove was an interesting move, putting him on the wing. He got a result there, kicked the goal. Wicks had plenty of the ball, just didn't register enough on the scoreboard. You can see here, Crane moving the ball forward, Gum went back, beautiful kick. Lovely shot with the wind behind him. Sturt have only had 11 scoring shots compared to Glenelg 25. I've mentioned it several times, another inside 50 stoppage that Glenelg won. And as a result, Ben Kane kicked his second for the quarter there. Here's another one inside 50. Nice hands. Willoughby celebrating, probably knowing at this stage that he's in the grand final. Absolutely. It was just a six-point margin at quarter time, although the Bays had clearly had the best of that opening quarter. Uh, Sturt was able to stay in touch. Second quarter, 10-10 to 4-4 at halftime, 42 the margin. And at three-quarter time, they've actually extended that by seven points. And that was in the best quarter that the Double Blues have had this afternoon. As we look through those goal kickers, Ben Kane off a wing with three. Grime has been excellent and hard-working. Ruwalt, Kirkby, you could say the same about the entire Bays side. It is what they are. And for the Double Blues, just single goals all the way down there at none for the Ken Farmer medalist in Brant Chambers. If we have a look at the stats, well, they are very much dominated by Glenelg. The inside 50s there, 42 to 29. Centre breaks, 11 to 6. 
They've had lots of scoring shots. They're winning the ball around the stoppages. They've had lots of possessions. They are actually a very good even team. They are indeed. Now, we've already looked at the WAFL final one comprehensively by Subiaco. The Lions winning easily. Now onto the VFL grand final. North Ballarat taking on Port Melbourne. It was under lights at the Docklands. McGrath, now Greg. Quick left foot kick to the danger spot. It goes to the back of the pack. Livingston's going to have to be careful here. North Ballarat with the numbers on the deck. And Driscoll kicks the first goal of the grand final. Around the corner by Bill Driscoll. It takes less than two minutes for the Roosters to get on the board. Maloney gives a little handball. Roach in all sorts of trouble. A gift goal for Port Melbourne and Kane. Sean Maloney will be looking to dig a hole. The captain turning it over too easily. Mike Chester for Gooch, centering kick. It's a small, that's a good mark to Grimmer. He used the body well. Uh, Grimmer gets the Roosters third and they're within a point. 18 minutes first quarter. McConnell, quick hands, Garland round the corner. Oh, it's a good shot. That's a, that's a fantastic goal from Garland. Point of his turf far out. And the last three goals for the Roosters, and they now lead by five. Uh, very well done by Steve Not so there, the kick straight to Fanning. Almost thought about going, now goes to Ryan McMahon. Shooter, kicks towards Bonadio, he's in front. He's worked underneath, and here is Mullins. Mullins goals, Port Melbourne, draw level. One minute, second quarter, an opportunist goal for the little fellow. Fleming and Smith combining at the back. Kick not great for Brewer. They need to make up their minds here. Josh Smith can really hurt them on the turnaround. Just as North Ballarat did a couple of times defensively in the first quarter. His Roosters leading by 11. Halfway through the third term. Third man into his ferry. To Clifton, great football! He's got it. Back to Greg, under the hammer. Oh, body oh, run by Urquhart. Brilliant run by Urquhart. Runs to 55, open goal. I think he's put it through. What a goal from Gavin Urquhart. Three goals to lead to the Roosters. And that is why Gavin Urquhart won a rising star nomination this year in the AFL. Tom Roach on the left foot. Time to steady, time to goal, and maybe time for the Roosters to celebrate. Yeah, I don't think they should be celebrating just yet, but, uh, you know, that's just about it. And a great goal, Tommy Roach. 35 points, the final margin in favour of North Ballarat in front of uh, just over 11,000 people. The VFL Grand Final, I should say the WAFL Grand Final attracted uh, 21,000, a bit over that. So I think we're a bit ahead of that. It's no doubt we know how to support our teams and um, they're out in force again today. And the Bays fans will be very happy about what's happened this afternoon, Soders. Yeah, they certainly are. But uh, there are a couple of problems at the Bays. Only 19 fit men at the moment. We spoke at half-time about Angus Lally. He's got some problems with that knee. He'll be assessed with some scans this evening. We saw Ty Allen come off. Now, the medical staff aren't sure whether he's dislocated that shoulder. They're going to ice it up, rest him for this term, and they'll have a look at him after the game as well, just to see how things are going. Mark Miggins still very happy with their work rate. Over at Sturt, well, they're just going to try and change things up a little bit. Rory Kirkby was terrific for Glenelg and has been for most of the day. They've now moved Patrick Fiddock on to Kirkby to try and calm him down. And Ben Nelson has now gone into the midfield just to add a bit of grunt and try and get the ball moving forward from there. Thanks for that, Soders. We're just about set for the start to the final quarter. The job is in front of the double blues. The Bays are cruising. Here's Chris Kendall. Certainly a huge task for Sturt to come back from here. You wonder how many double blues are about to play their final quarter of SANFL footy. Simon Feast, Ben Nelson come to mind. Can they drag one big effort out to give Nelson a fitting send-off? If this is the last roll of the dice, Fisher wrapped up. We're going to have another ball up. 
They really just need to find some spark from somewhere. Wicks started out so well, faded out a bit in that second term. Sheedy, free, an advantage to Wicks going deep in towards the attacking zone. Mark taken by Gum. Too far out to score, even for his penetrating foot. He's waiting for something to present. Thompson makes a lead. He's pointing up towards the hot spot. Oh, strong mark taken at the front. Cranston, he's been very good today. Backwell. Backwell certainly won his fair share of the ball also. They're lining up for it. Fisher could have handballed to Pinozzo, but he to keep it himself. Now he honours the Pinozzo lead. Block also breaking into space. It was Holmes. Called the play on. Keeps it on the grandstand side. Cranston and DeLuca will fly together. Cranston at the front. Paid the mark. Yeah, Daniel Kirk's return is so important for Cranston as well. Gives him a bit of support. Be a real fairy tale for Kirk. Oh, mark taken there by Kirkby. Mark or free either way. Kirkby, another one. Just gives them such diversity. They're lining up here for it. Could have been Bode, could have been Fisher. Ended up with Kane. Now he goes deep in towards the attacking zone. Willoughby, he's at the back, waiting for the bounce to sit. Oh, he's trying to twist the night away. Gonna have a throw in. Whilst looking unlikely at the at present, Sturt with, are going for four teams into grand finals. The 17s won the flag, the 19s and the reserves are there. They won the Stanley H. Lewis for the best club overall this year, Sturt. Unlikely to win this. Grimer's in good position. Grimer pulls it down. Well, I think Holmes was actually going for goal, but as it turned out, the kick sat up nicely and Grimer had Fittick out of position. Well, now players are just attacking the ball. See there, Fittick is looking for his direct opponent in Grimer instead of attacking the ball. Grimer, he just wanted the ball. Grimer. Looked a little narrow at the kick, but it wasn't optical illusion, obviously. Umpire was happy with it. He's looking to follow his brother into the record books. His brother Nathan winning a premiership last year with Central District. And I don't think there's any doubt that Todd Grimer is going to follow by playing in the grand final. It's just a question of the result. Nice mark, winded himself and was happy with the kick. That's his third goal for the game. We spoke pre-match about Todd Grimer. He's their leading goal kicker. He needs to score goals for Glenelg to be a force. Seven marks and 13 possessions today. He played a different role last week. He was moving a lot more around the 50. I've got plenty of possession, not as many goals. Today he's filled both roles neatly. It's a free kick to Holmes. So centre break goes the Bay's way. Centre break's 11-6. Deep into attack. They've had plenty of it in the forward 50 arc. Walk just paddles it over the boundary line. Interesting thing though, Glenelg nine marks inside their forward 50, Sturt eight. So you would think that it would be a bit closer than that. A lot of the Glenelg forwards are pushing deep up the ground to get their grabs. Haven't had much out of Chambers at all today, the double blues, that's hurt. Whiteman slips the tackle. Holmes is sitting under it. Takes it on the chest. He's got a plethora of options lining up for him. Does he go for Sherwood? Does he go into the centre? Youngster, one of the youngest players on the ground in next week's grand final. Kicks deep up into the 50 zone, strong mark from Kirkby. Had his name written all over it. He'll be lining up for goal number three. Well, Nicholas Walks been good all year, but he's had a day I think he'd rather forget today, like a number of Sturt players. You can see there, not even looking at the ball, just worrying about his opponent. Kirkby, like most other Glenelg players, attacking the ball. Kirkby has his shot. That's their third. Glenelg march into the 2008 Grand Final. The Central Districts are waiting. He knows his kicking ability. Kirkby pushes the ball to the left and waits for it to swing back in on his kick. You can see here run and jump. Nicholas Ward too far away and then just worrying about his opponent. 
instead of attacking the ball, trying to get a fist on it or maybe even getting in front. Margin now, every bit of 10 goals and just a little bit more at 61 points. The Bays in their long history, just four premierships, the last in 1986. And in recent years, Centrals, with six wins in the last eight years, have gone streaking past them on that premiership table. Sturt going forward looking for, but not finding Perry. Sherwood was his master that time. Long and high, but out of bounds on the full. Neil Ian Perry's just had the one possession since quarter time. It was after he opened with one goal two in the opening term to keep Sturt going forward when Grant Chambers wasn't able to get near the ball. So they go long and go for Feast. At the front crane, pretty good kick around the corner for Gum, couldn't half volley it. Nelson, he couldn't take it either. Now they crowd in around the ball on 50. It's not coming out, so the umpire will take over. Just a problem for Scott McGlone too, so it is on the boundary. Yeah, just some concussion. He's uh, looks like his afternoon will be over just heading down to the race with Dr. David Martin. Uh, not a good day to him to finish on. Block. And as they've done all day, the Bays in tight have been the masters. Now Fisher. Long he goes for Griner. Inside 50 decides to play on. On the left foot. Half volley no by Kirkby. And they got to let off the hook there, the double blues. It's out to Sheedy. It's going over the top by hand to Capillo. Capillo hasn't been their worst today. He's given them something from the defending side. Having said that, he passes it straight to Sherwood. I love it when you give them a rap like that. Ben Kane. Bode, Holmes, oh they're building now, it's going to end up with Willoughby. He's been an important return for them Willoughby, spent most of the first half of the year in the reserves, was contemplating a change of clubs at one point. See, the Glenelg midfielder sharing the ball through the midfield, being very patient, not blazing away, just waiting for an opponent to, uh, their teammate sorry, to lead and then hitting the target. Willoughby lining up, take the margin out to 67 points. Kicks on its way. The Tigers will fight for their right to party. And party time it is now. Well, it will be an emphatic victory. The Milk have deserved this. They started the game with high intensity, got off to a flyer. Their tackling has been very high. It's been a feature of their game. So has that, their ball use. We mentioned previously that Sturt, in terms of statistics, are better over the entire season in every area apart from ball efficiency. Glenelg have been very good in that area today. They already had the best record in preliminary finals. They will avoid the straight sets exit from the finals for the first time a club's done was going to do that since 91 when South Adelaide did it. Well, the Bays are now into a grand final. All that's left is the last rights on the preliminary final. Sturt with a centre break. Hello. And Feast. Cranston got it over the back. Nelson was wrapped up. We'll get another ball up. Be interesting to see what happens in relation to those two injuries. Glenelg went into the game with a number of players under injury clouds or had previously been injured, took a risk. None of those players have been injured today. I'm talking about guys like Sherwood, Murphy, those type of players. But unfortunately, they've received two injuries. One we know definitely will not play next week. The other will wait and see. I think one thing we do know, Pye, is that uh, Ty Allen is as hard as a cat's head. I think you'd have to just about take that arm off for him not to play. Makes a remarkable story, almost similar to Luke Hodge, doesn't it? And with cracked ribs, everybody thought he wouldn't play for Hawthorne, or possibly was in doubt for Hawthorne, shall we say, in the grand final. Stood up, was awarded best on ground honours. You can see that sort of thing happening with Ty Allen. Daniel Wicks, meanwhile, kicks from 49 metres at goal. Doesn't quite have the penetration. And Brad Chambers, who has not been held goalless this season, has this shot to maintain that record. It's at least something he can take out of the game because he's hardly been sighted. 
Well, look, Brent Chambers has been brilliant all year, but today is just the day he would rather forget. As you can hear the crowd, they give him the Bronx cheers. He won't be happy with his performance today. Having said that, he tacked the ball. Rudolph, as he has done all day, playing in front of Chambers. It is a difficult proposition for a forward to know what to do. Generally, the forwards tend to push up and push up and leave the space behind. We haven't seen a lot of that from Chambers today. Held goalless by Nord in round one and Glenelg in round 13. I should say one goal in both those games. And now he has one goal in the prelim final. Goals back in the centre. Holmes. Backwell. Cranston just fumbled it. Back to Backwell. Over the top. Block. Kane slips it over. Good mark, Daniel Kirk. Will he play on this time? You would think not. It does create an interesting selection dilemma for them, though, Rob. Given that the reserves were knocked out of the finals race, they might have a couple of selection issues next week. Do they bring in perhaps someone like a Scott Lewis, for example, to replace Ty Allen if he doesn't front up? Chris Kane's another possibility that could fill that role. Certainly be some interesting times of selections, but with Kirk. Kicks on its way. Rotten spot for a post if you Daniel Kirk. Margin out now to 62 points. Glenelg, 29 scoring shots to Sturt, 12. The inside 50s, 48 to Glenelg, 33 to Sturt. And Glenelg dominating in every area of the game. Wicks with the ball just travelling over before Painter can pull the ball in. Sturt will set some sort of record today. They've had the highest percentage in the minor round for a side that uh, has failed to make the grand final. Yeah, Mockridge working the stats magnificently. Just those earlier results. Preliminary final in the under-19s. Glenelg by 22 points over the Eagles. Same two clubs met in the reserves. Preliminary final. Get this. 14-12-96. The Eagles. Glenelg 14-11-95. A one-point result. Both those sides will take on Sturt. Both those winners will take on Sturt in the in the grand final next week. Kane with the free kick for out of bounds on the full takes his time. 24th position coming up for Ben Kane. Been very good this afternoon. That'll drop short. Gum at the front advantage by the kick took the mark. But the run's gone for the double blues. They finished in second position behind Glenelg with 15 wins for the season. The Bays, their masters this afternoon, as they've been in their past five clashes. And then another baller since the 2002 flag for Sturt, breaking a 26-year drought for them in terms of premiership. They played in four final series and they will have a record after this afternoon of two wins and seven losses. It has just not happened in September and October for the Double Blues. Well, it hasn't happened in October at all, actually, since 02. <laughs> it's only been September action. Last year, they were beaten by Glenelg in a memorable elimination final by just one point. And this afternoon, it'll be considerably more points. Glenelg, as they've done all day, quite happy to play it out cause a congested situation throw in ball up doesn't matter to them the strong body blokes that's how they play their football what? Comes down to gum gums work very hard today really has tried ends it up towards center half forward oh, a couple of stir players got out of each other's way Sherwood over the top mules Rudolph the hairdresser's best friend kicks into the center to Bode Oh, he's got them queuing on the outer side. Who's going to take it? Murphy or Kane? Murphy defers to Kane. Ben Kane takes a bounce, coming up for disposal number 25. Ops to centre it, and he's hit Golding. Well, he'd go close to being the best player on the ground, Ben Kane. He carries the ball with his legs, and then he kicks the ball enormous distances as well. He's that 70-yard player. This time he just did the unselfish thing and centred the ball straight to Doldick. He sense this tall forward line's going to make an interesting conquest for Centrals next week. 
Dolby slots at home, opens it out to 68 points. He's Dolby, Kirk there, Grimer. Going to be a mouthful in proposition against Central's Rob. It will be. All of the forwards in terms of Glenelg could perform today. Dolby's got two, Kirkby three, Grimer three. And just to add to that, their midfielders have also pushed forward and kicked goals. Guys like Ben Kane has finished with three, Ruwalt two and Willoughby two. Spent some time in the forward lines, those two, Willoughby and Ruwalt, but they do play on ball. Halfway through the final quarter. And it's a margin in favour of the Bays of 68 points. Sheedy with the clearance out of the middle. Not directed. It's just a quick one. Fisher intercepts it. Got it to Murphy. Sheedy came across on the mark. So Murphy waits. Grimer with the lead up. He's ignored that and waited again. Now they're pointing for Cranston who's come out from the goal square. That's the direction they go. Cranston was involved on the ground. Opposed to Crane. Flipped it out. Willoughby. His hand got corrected then. Now fitted. Over the top of Coe. Took his time, chipped it short. Good stretch from Gum, it stuck. They move it on quickly. Got it to centre wing, Sheedy. Sheedy looks up and waits, and Chambers leads. And they don't hit him. And as Rob said, he hasn't led enough this afternoon. Brad Chambers with good vision goes backwards for McClay. Doesn't execute properly, and Holmes intercepts. And now Dolvik's free on this side of the ground, and running from behind as well as Pinoza. So Pinoza just cuts inside. They've owned the corridor this afternoon, and the wings, and the half-back line, and the half-forward line. Here's Murphy. Long he goes. Grimer, but a tired-looking. Todd Grimer turns around and says, well, you could have put it there or there, and I would have got it. I think it was a tired-looking kick from Murphy as well. He's played on the wing the majority of the day. Cranston. Crane. Pulls it out of the stoppage. Going further afield. Gum again. That was clever. Twists and turns back to Crane. Puts the skates on. Couldn't quite get around Fisher. Just gets the disposal away in time. Now switching further up. Into the attacking zone, looking for Chambers, Rudolph again. Yes, Rudolph's just illustrating to Chambers what he hasn't seen a lot of today. It's been a fantastic performance by Rudolph. He's played very well. Obviously, suffering from concussion early in the week. He's bounced back. Oh. Beautiful kick from Panozzo. Ends up with Murphy. Holmes. Back to Murphy. Unloads into attack. Grimer's in the front spot. Slips through his fingers. Goes back into wrestle through. Cranston riding in like a racehorse. We're going to have a ball up. Well, it's party time at the moment for the Glenelg boys. They're getting plenty of possessions, plenty of the ball doing as they wish. He still averaged 325 disposals. He's only 227 today. That's an illustration of the Bay's dominance. Rush behind. Well, if indeed it is party time for the Bay's, that takes us back to when they last won a premiership in the mid 80s and 85 and 86 it was the bay disco and it was on for young and old down there so who knows maybe that's a good sign as well do you have a go neil you've got to be kidding i wasn't in south australia then <laughs> <laughs> and i wouldn't go down there trust me it involved all sorts of things which i'm too puritan to go to what dancing and music <laughs> oh, lots of lots of drinking sodas. You know I'm a Puritan. Fisher wide. Oh, oh and Off it quickly to Bone. Finish the job. It deserves a goal. It got a post. Well, you spot on there, Crossy. That did deserve a goal. Let's have a look at that. Ball over him. Did ride him like a horse that time. And just for good measure, dishes off to Bone. Beautiful mark, Todd Grimer. As I said, it's party time for the Bays. Goalpost gods not smiling on the Tigers. Since we see that one plenty of times in the lead up to the grand final. Magnificent grab. Fullback kick in. Double blues going over the top. McClay. He's tried. 
Just hasn't really got his hands on it enough, but when it has come to a contested situation, he's generally won them. It's going to sit for Whiteman. Oh, he breaks away. Goes deep in towards the Perry zone. That man again, Rudolph. Could have almost been paid the mark. Kirk gets the clearing kick away. Kane. Oh, Ruwold, take your pick. Goes over the top to Mules. Ruwold. He's going to take a bounce. You're taking so many running bounces, Cladell. That could make for an interesting scenario next week against Central. Switching out, Willoughby. Hands it into the path of Doldick. Oh, Cranston's going to have a snap. Yeah, really wants party time now, and the big toys having pings. Had two plays to dish it off. Thought, no, I've done all the hard work all day. I'm going to have a snap at goal. Double Blues to bring the ball in, trailing by 71 points. We talked about last week when they won by that margin. How North, uh, Norwood, I should say, didn't give much of a yelp. Well, been the Double Blues this afternoon. In fact, you probably you probably look back and think they they just didn't look like it from the start of the game. Well, for a side that's averaged 103 points per game to only register 47, it's pretty disappointing. Might be 53 after this kick from Gum. Shepherding work was good from Chambers in the goal square. And. A lot of the Blues supporters, I think, have probably gone home. There weren't too many applause for that goal. And it was a good kick on the turn by Tristan Gum. But this game is well and truly gone. Tristan Gum has battled tirelessly all day. He hasn't been their worst performer. Unfortunately, he hasn't had too many other teammates that can hold their head high. They'll be extremely disappointed with this loss. They've been in a great position all year, Sturt. Tristan Gum, 18 kicks and three handballs. Simon Feast comes on. Would this be his final few minutes in SNFL? Wonderful servant for the Sturt Footy Club for so long. Whiteman taking the ground there by Backwell. It's going to be a free to madness, Whiteman. Whiteman, another one who's given the club plenty of service. Just wonder about some of these older players. Strong mark from Ruwald for a free. Well, they might make a number of changes depending on what happens with their playing list. This 25 metres has been given by Richard Williams. Just some undisciplined work by Sturt. They haven't put their best foot forward today. Given away so many 25s. He's frustrating coach Rick McGowan. Luke Panozzo drifting down. Don't think that Rua will pass off at this stage. A lot of ambition in there. Nozzo unloads from 55. That's a long kick. It's going to fall just short. Punch through from on a score. Well, at this point of the game, the reality is all that Mark Micken wants is no injuries, no further injuries. They've copped two. They don't want any more. He just wants the siren to go and they can move on to the grand final. Boys, you watched uh, the Bulldogs smash Grinnell by five goals last week. What did Grinnell have to do now to get over them? I think if they play with this intensity, so it is, there's no doubt it'll be a, a good game. They are really hard at it at the moment, and if they can take that mindset into next week's game, well, they'll give themselves every opportunity. Here's Evans. Looking for Nelson. Hinge came in, took the crumb. Ruwalt in board Holmes. Went for Hinge, missed him. Now Kirk. Backwell. Big Shepherd coming up, and I think Thompson's been knocked out. I think he's out. Cole behind play. Kane goes long to the goal face. No mark there. Cranston at the bottom of the pack. Working hard as he has done all season. And Cabillo content to put the ball back. Out of play. And I think that will be it for the next few moments because we'll get a stretcher on the ground. Well, good sign is there that Thompson is moving. Expect a delay here if the stretcher does come out. See Thompson, that's a fair hip and shoulder. There's nothing wrong with that. There was no elbow raised. It just collected him, obviously, on the temple there. Hip and shoulder by Mules. Nothing untoward in that. So no stretcher on the ground. 13,846 the attendance this afternoon. 
as slowly Thompson being walked off the ground the umpire hasn't allowed play to go on obviously he thinks it's dangerous with a player walking like that off the ground well there's no reason why the umpire shouldn't start the, the game there's no stretcher on the ground that we can see let's just take it up on uh, that hip and shoulder if you get somebody high in that situation and you're in AFL football you'd be thinking maybe I might not play in a grand final what yeah, happened? Happen. I don't think so. I think uh, Mules will have nothing to worry about there. He kept his elbow tucked in, collected him slightly high, but I think it was more unlucky than anything untoward. He's a tough unit, Thompson. He is crowd, indeed. Crowd are getting impatient. They want the game to start again. Is that another one playing his final go for Sturt? Probably means outside his control. Well, it's, it is outside his control. It really depends on what the power want to do with him and if he does want to move on. Well, finally, play will get underway again. With the ball thrown in just outside the forward arc for Glenelg. Bowed with a slippery little hand pass to Backwell. Squared the ball, Farmer, but from behind came the leap. Now on the ground, Willoughby taken down. We'll get another ball up, 25 out from the Bays goal. I mentioned 13,846 this afternoon probably good for Adam Thompson you got that hit he won't remember today and that's probably a good thing probably because good it thing. hasn't been great for the double blues that's the best preliminary final crowd for six years could be low to Wicks gum Wicks is moving on for the one two he's also got Whiteman calling for it goes to the latter just landed his feet it's perhaps summed up their disposal a lot of today the Luca that certainly sums up their disposal. It's ended up with Doldig in midfield. It kicks long at Grimer. Another mark of the day contender. They're queuing up for it. Backwell. You reckon he'll slot this home, don't you? Just going to come out the back. Oh, good mark at the front taken by Farmer. Very promising youngster. 28 possessions for Brett Backwell today. 27 for Ben Kane. Backwell started well, nine disposals in the first term and kept the skates on from that moment. Feedy. Glenelg remaining disciplined to the end. They're just dropping numbers all around. Ben Nelson. Doesn't get a chance to emulate his father. Leather of field running through is Farmer. Farmer out to Perry. Rudolph. Rudolph has been wonderful back there today. Well, you'd think half the time that Sturt are actually looking for him. He's rooting the ball unbelievably, Rudolph. They're certainly making his job easier. Bo just sits on it. Well, I made mention that Ben Kane was one of the best to field. Rudolph would also have claims to that. Looking for a ball up. Empire Richard Williams throws it up. I wonder if he'll be there next week, of course, in the grand final. The three grand final umpires. It'll be a selection dilemma on its own for Shane Harris. Richard Williams, one of the most decorated SNFL umpires of all time. Cabillo gets the hit out. Not a stat you call that often. Into the ground is Backwell. Going to have another ball up. Jay Chee's at 27 for Stewart after only having eight at half time. Yeah, he really has tried hard to lift his team in the second half. All to no avail. There's the side. in the 2008 Grand Final. Well, a fantastic performance by Glenelg. They finished on top of the ladder, minor premiers. They were disappointing in their first final, but today in the preliminary final, when it counts, they were good, they were tough, they were hard. They ran harder than Sturt. They got their hands on the ball. They had first use of the ball due primarily to Trevor Cranston. They had 34 scoring shots. 17-17, Sturt, well they were pretty disappointing today, 13 scoring shots, 8-5, 53 points. Interesting situation for Sturt, they've played great football all year, many believe probably the best list, but just wasn't their day today. On the flip side, Glenelg, well they were fantastic.
Absolutely. One of their best players this afternoon is actually the reigning best and fairest at the Bay, Ben Kane. He's down at ground level with Sodas. Well, Ben, congratulations. Into a grand final. It was a massive turnaround from last week's habit. Uh, it was. We just uh, let ourselves down a bit in the third quarter last week. and. Yeah, we just had a really good week on the track and said, no, nah, we're not going to cop that. We're not going to go in straight sets after finishing on top. And uh, the boys just came out. Awesome effort today and uh, really pumped for next week now. So we're good. Certainly look at the physical side of the game. Uh, it looked like you improved that a lot and the intensity was a lot greater this week. Was that something you brought into the game with you? Yeah, I'm not sure whether we haven't had a... You know, after, after every time we've had a week off, we don't come out firing too much. So, yeah, I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but this week we, uh, yeah, just really took it out on the track and the boys were awesome all week. And, uh, yeah, just to bring it out on, onto the ground and, yeah, it was great. Sammy Rudolph obviously had a pretty quiet week after getting knocked out. His job on Brand Chamber certainly made life a lot easier, didn't it? Oh, that just shows the character of, like, he's, uh, he's unbelievable. Uh, you know, what, Chambers kicked one goal or something like that. And, uh, yeah, he, I think he gets the best of him every week and... Uh, yeah, he's just great for our side. Really neat. I'm sure yesterday you probably watched your old teammates win a flag. Uh, gave you a little buzz coming into today? Yeah, actually, we uh, all went down uh, the footy club yesterday and watched it together. And, uh, yeah, they put on a really good performance. And I guess uh, that was our focus, just first of the ball. That's what the Hawks were yesterday. And, uh, yeah, we came out and did a similar thing and uh, paid off. Personally, mate, you played fantastically well today. You get your chance next week now. Look forward to it. Thanks a lot. Ben Kane, 23 games with the Hawthorne Football Club because before coming to the Bay. And on a wonderful afternoon for football, as it turned out, it was a wonderful afternoon for the Tigers. Not too much time to dwell on that, of course, as they march into a grand final against the club that everybody now has to beat in order to win a premiership, it seems, because they've played eight grand finals in a row. They will play their ninth. That man there... Very, very unlucky, you would say, Angus Lowy. Yeah, look, he'll be shattered. I mean, not often your team makes a grand final. Glenelg haven't been there for a while. He's played all year, and unfortunately for him, he's going to miss the grand final. And even even worse, it may be an anterior cruciate ligament injury. A generation of players, if you like, has gone through the Glenelg Football Club since they last played the Premiership Decider, and that was in 1992. And now this group of players will have another chance as we look at how it all unfolded and really right from the start, it looked like the Bays were switched on. Well, as you can see by that mark there, Todd Grimer, they were playing in front right across the ground. Didn't matter if you were Rudolph playing at full back or if you're a midfielder or if you're a forward, they were all playing in front. Some great work by their midfielders to get hold of the ball, give themselves first use. Not too often did Sturt have an opportunity to go forward, find space. Glenelg just closed them down. Too often their defenders would stream forward like this. Lucky bounce, but they had a number of options to give off. They were prepared to run and carry. He spoke about this clever little play by Grimer, just moving off the line. The best thing about Glenelg was probably their tackling. That wasn't one of the best tackles of the day, but they were hard at it all day. Sturt didn't really stand up when it counted. You talk about that hardness around the ball. They seem to be lacking in that area this afternoon. Certainly, maybe not hardness or not, not lack of effort even, but just they just struggled to get their hands on the ball in close against the toughness of the Tigers. That's a spot on. The toughness of the Tigers was the, the feature of the day. Sturt just looked jaded. They didn't have the spark that they usually have around the midfield. A lot of their players were quiet. They picked up in the third quarter, but that was about it for 10 minutes. They made a number of mistakes. There's one. They didn't hit the targets. And to be brutally honest, I think Sturt would be extremely disappointed. Their two key forwards, Chambers and Perry, didn't feature at all in the game and their midfield were convincingly beaten where do they go because you look at what they did last season they faded late in the season ended up in an elimination final which you could say they're a little unlucky simon feast missing a shot at goal 20 seconds from the end of the match losing by a point to the bays they came in this season with lots of high hopes 
and they end up fading out again. Well, you just wonder if it's something to do with their fitness program. They did look jaded. They, they weren't up and about the place like you need to be, particularly for a uh, preliminary final. So maybe that's something that Rick McGowan can tinker with over the pre-season. Maybe not get off to such a good start. Give them a longer spell. Perhaps not as intense over the pre-season, but then try to groom them midway through the season so that they can peak at the end of the year. You see here, this uh, action shows some of what Stewart was capable of. They certainly had their, their moments, just mostly in that third quarter. I mean, yes, the opening quarter was fairly even, but you felt Glenelg was getting on top. And then the third quarter, they came out with a little bit of a rush, a couple of goals at the 9-11 minute mark, and we thought just for a moment, here we go, but it didn't quite happen for them. They didn't and get the ball into the forward line enough, and that's very evident and reflects on the scoreboard. They only had 12 shots at goal. Now we spoke about it very early in the game. They look dangerous every time there's a stoppage in their forward 50. They would either kick the goal themselves, centre it. In this occasion, I think the Glenelg player tried to have a shot, but Todd Grimer did his job all day. Kicks another goal. Well, you look at this and you say, OK, who are the stoppage kings in the SANFL? Hmm, Central District. That's what they're going to come up against next week. If they can repeat that intensity, can you see a premiership on the horizon? Well, it's an interesting proposition because Central are quite happy to play stoppage after stoppage and, and just push the ball forward through grunt work. Sturt have got some players that have the ability to do that, but they like a bit more time and space and push the ball wide and use their skill. Glenelg are a team right across the board. And I suppose that the best way to describe Glenelg is a team. They have no real stars. As we look through the scores of the afternoon, it was close at quarter time. Just the six points, the margin, but it had blown out the 42 at half time and any hopes Sturt had were blown away probably midway through the third quarter. And Glenelg settled for a 49 point lead and the run home was pretty easy as well. 66 points, an 11 goal victory. They'd be happy with the contributions they've had, both from guys like Grimer, but also you, you look at their key forwards, and Kirkby and Grimer are two of them who've done well. Doldig with a couple as well, but look at the contributions in multiple goals that have come there, as opposed to the double Blues, who got not much out of Brant Chambers and Ian Perry. Yeah, I think there's no doubt that uh, Glenelg had a number of goal-scoring options and it comes back to their work rate. You can see there guys like Ben Kane kicking three goals from the midfield. He plays across half-back or on the wing. They had Willoughby and Ruwalt run through the midfield and push forward. So they got some of their smalls kicking goals and obviously they had their tools that all featured their three, three key forwards. We have a look at the stats. You can see there the inside 50s is the big one. 57 to Glenelg, 39 to Sturt, centre breaks 14 to 9, they dominated in every area of the game, their possession rate was very high, Glenelg Sturt, extremely disappointing today they average over 100 points per game and you can see there, if you get the ball inside Ford 50 only 39 times you will not win a game from there Well, the Glenelg boys will be very, very happy with that result undoubtedly and into the rooms, Matty Doldig, who had a much better game this week than last week. Paul Sherwood was in doubt, missed last week, maybe might have missed this week. He proved his fitness. Obviously, Rudolph stood up down back. They were very important. Lucas Block, last year's reserves, best and fairest. Ben Mules, who comes from the southeast, from their zone. Ty Allen's got an interesting week ahead of him as well. And Mark Micken, the coach. They would be very, very happy, but I know Mark Micken would not be satisfied. Oh, no, they've got another game to play. They've done all the hard work to give themselves an opportunity to play in a grand final. They're now in the grand final. You don't just go into a grand final to participate. You've got to win the final. So <laughs> that's, that's, it's, it's as simple as that, and that's what Mark Micken will be focusing on. Undoubtedly so, and he's with Sodas down in the rooms right now. Well, Mark, you just had a, a bit of a chat to the players there. It seemed very much about the process, very quick to uh, knock any or too much excitement on the head. Oh, I just wanted to, you know, congratulate them on their effort, but um, to realise that it's a, for them to realise it's a means to an end, not an end in itself, and, uh, you know, not to uh, dampen it for them at all, but um, for them to appreciate um, what they've achieved, and, but also to put a, a perspective on it and, the, the, you know, to get the process of this week in place as quickly as we possibly can. One of your uh, key strengths all year has been the work at the stoppages. Again, that was uh, exemplary today. Just stopped Sturt getting any time and space. Yeah, we were, managed to do that really well, I thought. We uh, restricted their, uh, you know, their movement out of there when they got hold of it. And uh, I thought we were pretty 
uh, fluent ourselves when we got hold of it in stoppages and we were able to you know, use, some, use the ball pretty well going inside 50. Mark, it's Robert Pyman here. I thought your uh, inside forward 50 stoppages were superb. You had a number of opportunities today to score from those inside forward 50 stoppages. Is that a feature of your game that you've worked hard on all season? Yeah, yeah. It's something that uh, we, we, we try to do is get uh, shots on goal from those situations. And, uh, yeah, we did get a few today. We probably could have kicked a few more if you're a little bit more accurate. But uh, the, the, little, the small blokes in the forward line today and the big fellas provided the opportunities. And, uh, yeah, that was a good, a good part of the game for us. And, Mark, uh, look, when we spoke last week, you were very careful not to say if you lost this afternoon, it would be a season wasted. Do you, you've obviously put a lid on it now that it would, be a, it would be an opportunity wasted if we don't go on and play well in a grand final. Yeah, well, that's our aim now. You know, we uh, we only ever look, you know, at what we can achieve. And you know, we, we look at trying to um, prepare the best possibly way, possible way we can. And uh, I thought that was probably a strength of the week we just had. We had a very good preparation, and we need to have a good, very good preparation um, this week. Mark, just for the uh, the grand final preparation, what will the week be for your fans? What what will it involve? Yeah, we'll train um, Monday night um, at, at at home um, at Challenge Recruitment Oval down at Glenelg. And I believe um, uh, Amy Stadium is available uh, to train on during the week at some stage. So that'll be Wednesday night for us, I would imagine. And then Friday, uh, back at Glenelg. Um. Mark, uh, we noticed Angus Lally, of course, went down. I saw you talking to him at the end and also Ty Allen. What's the latest on them? Have you had much uh, feedback from the medical staff? Uh, yeah, well, the medical staff have been, they deserve a mention, actually, because Paul Sherwood, you know, they got him up this week. Um, they got Sammy Rudolph up, um, Byron Murphy, they were terrific. Um, and so we still, you know, hold out some hope for both of those guys. Um, Gus is a knee, so, you know, early days doesn't look good, but we'll see. And uh, Ty Allen, no one's, there's not a tougher player than Ty Allen, so, you know, we give him every opportunity and every chance of being available. You just mentioned uh, Paul Sherwood there coming back in. I suppose it was a two-fold win for you because he was terrific at half-back, but it actually released uh, Kirkby back to half-forward, which was a win. Yeah, we were very keen to get him back there. You know, we felt that we missed his presence um, the week before against Central when he was a, a dominant force today. And, uh, yeah, the players really looked for him. And, uh, you know, I think everybody appreciated having him there. I'm sure they did, Mark. Well done. Congratulations. Into a grand final. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you Sunday. Thanks, Otis. Thanks a lot. Obviously, that came from before we spoke to Mark Micken, because since then he's put an absolute lid on it and said, right, that's enough. We've got a process to go through. Well, there's no doubt they do, and I think that'll be the focus for this week. It, it isn't just another game. They will prepare like it's another game, but at the end of the day, it's a grand final. Yep, and it's a grand final to look forward to. One of the players who was looking forward to today and showed it up pretty well, all his talents, Todd Grimer, he was important. He was one of their best players last week against against Central's when they struggled and this afternoon he's produced some of his best work and we'll just have a look at the what are we on to goal of the day you can see here he gains possession of the ball just outside forward 50 <laughs> and he, he realized he wasn't quite quick enough but just deviated off the line and clever play top line of goal of the day the quickest way between two points is a straight line, not for him. The quickest way to <laughs> goal was to zigzag. Well, he made 50, he turned 50 into 60. <laughs> Absolutely. Now we're going back down to the rooms and Ben Mules had five different coaches in his first five seasons at the Bay, but he'd be happy to settle on Mark Micken long term. I'm sure he's with Chris Kendall. Yeah, certainly is. Thanks very much, Neil. Ben, of course, the hard work starts now, but that was just a magnificent effort by the boys. He jumped stood early on and you were never headed from that point. Yeah, look, we uh, we talked about it, you know, against Centrals. We we didn't think we were too bad, but you know, it wasn't a really four four quarter effort. 
and um, you know the win was good, but I think the way we went about it was was the most pleasing aspect. And you know we you know we had to really put in four quarters of uh, you know quality tough football, and you know uh, we did that, so we got the result. And for a bloke who was in a bit of doubt earlier on in the week, Sammy Rudolph was just outstanding. Now back, he gave Chambers nothing and took so many great defensive marks. Yeah, he's he's amazing like that. Um, you know, he's all skin and bone, but you know the way he raised the ball and he gets his fist in, uh, you know, where where you wouldn't be able to, you know, think think it so. Um, and the way, yeah, just the way he reads and his uh, drive and rebound as well is just so valuable for us, so yeah. There was a lot of the younger players that really stood up too. We forget that Todd Grime was only 21 and Tommy Holmes will be yeah. playing in his first grand final at 19. They just gave you so much spark all day. Yeah, look, Tommy, Tommy's a class act. He, you know, he just gets on the end of it and, you know, when he's got the ball running in, in inside 50, you know, that he's, he's going to use it. And, and Toddy's just a big presence that, you know, we just love having him in the side, you know, crashing packs and, and taking big marks and kicking goals and he's just a great personality to have. Now you reckon that Daniel Kirk's chosen the right time to come back. Uh, he'll be a great support for Trevor Cranston next week. But he was really good today, took some good contested marks. Yeah, no, nah, Kirk, he times it well, doesn't he? he uh, he's slotted it back uh, right at the right time. But, you know, he's, he's handy for us, especially with uh, Lockie Button, our uh, second ruckman going down just when he came back. He, he timed it well, the big fella. But, you know, he's important for us. And, you know, just give Trev that little bit of relief. It's going to be a huge one next week. Central District's the benchmark for so long. It's your first grand final in 16 years, mate. Soak it up and enjoy it. Yeah, cheers, boys. Thanks. Thanks, mate. Ben Mules there, and now we go on to a man who was talking about Todd Grimer. Important this afternoon, and that's why. Mark of the day. You can see that technically it's probably a free kick because he had his hands in the back of code, but umpire assessed it very well <laughs> and let the game go on. Absolutely. Ben Mules, too, third season as captain, longest serving captain since Nick Chigwidden, and yet he's going to lead them into a grand final. And he's been instrumental in their progress over that period and they've had some stability. Finally, the Glenelg Football yeah. Club has had stability and lo and behold, they're in a grand final. It's really not rocket science and a lot of clubs look at Centrals and Sturt and the Eagles and now Glenelg can go, why are they successful? They've got stability. So. Absolutely. They know where they're going, don't they? You can see Mark Micken, a uh, very cerebral coach, as is Rick McGowan, I think, from what I've been told. But Obviously, uh, Mark Micken knows where they're heading, knows what he wants to achieve, and he certainly, well, he's almost got there, hasn't he? He has. I mean, they've got one game to go, and they'll be assessed by the game next week. Uh, so, it's just from what you know of uh, what's going on post-game, Angus Lally surely won't play next week. Well, look, we uh, spoke to the medical staff just after half-time, and after they'd assessed the knee, they thought that... Uh, it could be an anterior cruciate ligament. Even Mark Micken said there in the interview at the end that he thought uh, the first thoughts, of course, were that it wasn't good. So we would imagine he wouldn't play. Ty Allen, as he said, he is an absolute tough nut, Chris, and he's magnificent, Ty Allen. And I thought he was one of the best stories of the McGarry medal was that they recognised a, a player of his ilk. But I think, uh, you, look, you'd have to just about uh, tie him down and lock him up to stop him from playing, I think, Ty. Oh, the beauty is they've got so much depth in the reserves. I mean, of course, they went down today in the prelim final in reserves. There's plenty of good kids that can come through for them. It's just great for the competition more than anything else. We've seen Central's in there for so long. The Tigers, well, the Snouts, Louts will be singing the club song long and hard next week. Long week ahead for the Tigers, but they should be up to it. I think uh, one of the things, too, we noticed that as the players came in, there was a real buzz of excitement. But Mark Micken, as we saw, was pretty quick just to knock that on the head and say, boys, it's a process, and you just move through one stage of it. There's still a long, long way to go. Thanks for that, boys, as we look forward to next week. Central District against the Bays in the grand final from 3.30 on ABC1. Join us for that. Should be a great match. The Bays are into a grand final.